Bueller. And should we just get this out of the way? What's up? Happy Kip, birthday. Happy birthday. Great to see you. We heard Thank that you. Orlando stopped. Oh, and you yeah. didn't call us. Mm-hmm. You didn't, didn't call us. Didn't even come up. That was a work trip. I was, I was busy molding <laughs> the you, minds of the youth. Were you were you working when you were on the Harry Potter roller coaster repeatedly? That didn't I didn't go on it. I didn't go on a Harry Potter roller coaster only because the line wait was seventy minutes. Otherwise, I would have seventy. <laughs> That's not bad for a new ride. No, it wasn't no. And if only which hey, one was it? Hagrid's, Hagrid's ride. I didn't go on any rides. You didn't even go on the train. We really didn't have any time to. We really like did one lap around that Islands of Adventure thing, walking with. Uh, him, his wife, his, my buddy, the coach, his wife, and baby in a stroller, and we were out of there. Hmm. Did you even go on Velociraptor? Get, 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 get in our, getting our steps in. Just getting our steps in. You didn't go on Velociraptor? You didn't go on Jurassic Park? Nothing? None Man. of it. You didn't, you didn't go on Rock and I, Roller Or not Rock and Roller Rip Ride Rocket, where it goes straight up, and then you just go. If I were to go on any of them, it would have been, uh, was it the Incredible Hulk one? Yeah, that, that was, was good. cool, too. Yeah. I At was your busy. age, you should get to the front of the line. You should totally get to the front of the line at your age. <laughs> Old ass Kipnis. I was busy talking with AJ about the five star fields we were playing on. Yeah, I know. Mm. Did you see my high school though? What high school? Dr. Phillips? Uh no, we only played at two fields and one of them was No. That... When you were you said you stayed at Cabana Bay, right? Yes. Is it's a, literally across the street from there. We were to and from on buses, so I'm sure I did see it, but didn't know if, if that was the high school or the one that you went to. Yeah, that's where the magic started. Dr. Pepper <laughs> High School. <laughs> Let me take you on a roller coaster ride. Let's charge the damn mound. It's called the New York Mets. It's charging the mound. All right, so they were defeated entering yesterday, them and the Marlins. In game one, they were leading. They used seven relievers. Adrian Hauser pitched well. You could make a case that they took Eric Kratz's favorite pitcher out a little bit too early. Five innings, three hits, one earned run, three walks, three strikeouts, 67 pitches. They tie the game with a Riley Green home run in the eighth off Adam Adovino. Um, the Mets went hitless in the final six innings. And they lost an extra six to three. But in game two, they break a 13-inning hitless streak. Longest in team history, bottom of the eighth. Harrison Bader does it. And you would think that there was an earthquake in the tri-state area. They were so happy. And Pete Alonzo hits a home run with a pitch barely off the ground, a changeup. Tyrone Taylor, first career walk-off hit. And the New York Mets have their first win of the season. 13 innings of no hit Yay. baseball. That's Yay. my fault. I took the I took the over. <laughs> I mean, Pete Alonzo, man, I feel bad for him. That was Gator on Gator crime right there on his teammate, Alex Fajardo. They were in Gainesville, I think, together maybe for a year or so. Probably. It was and, close to each other. And his teammate at UF, Bader. Bader, the, yeah. Mm -hmm. 13 inning. And you know what the problem is? I'm they worried can't about hit. the Mets The problem pitching. is they can't hit. The problem is they can't <laughs> hit. Yeah, Nemo and Lindor haven't hit. But Ugh. eventually, their pitching is going to be a problem, Kratz. They don't have a lot of pitching depth this year. That's not their thing. They actually have a lot of position player talent coming from the minors. But, I mean, they can't hit right now. Congratulations to Carlos Mendoza because he set himself up for his first ever managerial win by using all his pitchers in the first game. <laughs> totally blew it. Left himself two guys for the second game in the pen. And then he was like, ah, I'll just go ahead and win the second game. Not the way he... He texted me. He's like, "Not the way I thought I was going to win my first game, but we got it done." <laughs> they can't. They they can't. If they have a pitching depth issue, they have to be able to get more than sixty-seven pitches out of a pitcher who's winning a game. I get it. Third time through, that is a Hauser thing. And when you have a double header, man, it's kind of like it's kind of like uh, Tori Lavello using his using his last guys on the bench. You got to think. I got two games today. I know you want to win the first one. Because that's more valuable than winning none. But maybe that was a little early. Obviously, because it didn't work out for him, it was a little early. But 67 pitches, that ain't it. Leave the man in the game. Jose Budo saved him. Six innings, saved one earned him. run. 
got in some he trouble early, to. but he didn't him. want to. He was both him and Manning. They were giving up rockets all over the yard. It was like three walks and five walks. I'm like, this is this game's going to be perfect. Drop it in somewhere. Eighth inning. Oh wait, no Mets hits yet. Yo, the NL East is going through right now, Kip. Your hands are tied as a manager, kind of. You're you aren't hitting. You don't really. You can't afford to do any move any pieces with the pitching staff too much. You got to just roll it out there. They're not hitting. They're not giving him any any freedom to kind of get creative with who he's throwing out there. True. True. Yeah, offense isn't bad on paper. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it wasn't bad last year on paper either. It didn't do so good. No, it didn't. So is the NL East actually? Bad. It's Braves the Braves aren't. and Phillies are awesome. <laughs> the Braves aren't. The Braves and Phillies. The, the Marlins Braves are, are awesome. not good. The Marlins are still defeated. Mm-hmm. The, Mar- the Marlins are not good. Nats the Nats are not good so far. Um, but they've all had to play the Pirates, so that's half the problem. Run right? into Pirates the buzzsaw. Yeah. They ran into the Pirates buzzsaw with Rowdy leading the charge. Pirates are legit. We'll get to them, but... Gary Cohen, Mets broadcaster yesterday at one point said, nobody in the ballpark, 0-5, hitless through seven. It feels like rock bottom. I'm like, damn, it's only a week in. Did you see the? Cool. Uh, they had the little rain cloud with Gary Cohen's picture on it? It was going all over the place, like raining on people. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't have the sound on, but I saw it. <laughs> uh, see, like Debbie Downing. That's a long season. You just said what he was. I'm saying like the, you know, the SNL skit. Have you ever seen that? Yeah. With Debbie Downer. I mean, it's hard to be excited when wah, wah, you're either losing wah. or it's raining or both. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so, anything though, Mets? Are we are we thinking that I, this is going to be a it's, bad team it's not, or it's mediocre? Not a great. It's not a great start, but I like to give teams at least a, uh, a few weeks in to okay. to gain their footing and kind of show their true colors. Definitely not how they wanted to get off, um, but give them a little bit more time. 80 wins level. over under. Just I think under. they'll finish 500. I think they'll finish 81 and 81. Okay. So just over? Under. Under, under. 500. Under. High seven. You think they're going to be in, even when they get, they get Singa back? Yeah, I'm looking at like 76 to 78. The, the pit. A lot coming yet in the minors. I just think the you know, they're going to sell at the deadline, right? I know we're a week in. We have to keep putting the disclaimer out there, but <laughs> yeah, they're not great. And good for the Tigers. I mean, they won another series. They took two out of three there. Good start for Detroit. All right? Yeah. And they'll good be for JD Martinez. That's going to help. JD Martinez can hit. They're yeah. going to hit. That's- I'm not afraid of their hitting. Afraid for their hitting or of their hitting? <laughs> for their hitting. I'm for not afraid. Okay. I think I think their lineup will hit. They've consistently yeah. done it, and it's dudes that put together really good years. Pete's going to have 50 plus. That's that's crazy that I'm saying that, but like that's just that's who he has been. Like he hit that ball out yesterday. How many guys are hitting that ball out? That was not nasty. many. It's a change up on the ground. Yeah, it was it was down. This it is it, it like Yeah, that was a good swing. Good swing on a bad pitch. Right. Well, like what what does a pitcher say in that case? Nothing. You go you tip your cap and you go on move on. There's nothing you can do. Yeah. What do you say I should have thrown it an inch lower where it would have bounced? Yeah. <laughs> not a bad pitch. No, not a bad you, pitch, you, not a bad thing. It was you it keep was, the it was barrel fine. through. Yeah, if you keep the barrel through as long as Pete did on that swing right there, you could see the emphasis on trying to make sure the wrists don't roll over. That was a great swing. I mean, I mean talk about uh, Pete and how strong he is because no, most people also keep the barrel through and it doesn't go that far. Yeah. Right? I mean, he was through it, down through it, and then stayed there and the ball went out of the park, which in City Field is not a joke either. It's not like it's Cincinnati or one of the other places. And then, while we're in the division, the Marlins lose again. <laughs> they were winning for a while. <sighs> um, the Cardinals had their home opener. 
Mm. Lance Lynn's a, a weird case right now. He gets he picks up punch outs, seven Ks, four and two thirds, gave up three homers. But later on, Cardinals Cardinals can swing it too. That's, two to the burger. He gave up offense. two to the burger. Yep, two to the burger. But se- a spit five run seventh. Gorman had a two run double in that inning, and they beat him. The, the, the problem with the Marlins is they, they're, they're so – I mean, look at their starting rotation. They have a starting rotation that is having Tommy John or on the IL right now. So, it's rough. No offense. I mean, listen, they have big leaguer guys out there, but they're not Alcantara, Yuri Perez, all these guys that they have out. And they need these guys. And, and right now, I mean, gosh, if you're Skip Schumacher, you're going through it right now. John Jay, you are going through it because you're thinking, gosh, we were we made the playoffs last year. This year, we, we can't win a game. I told you, I was on a team started 0-9. You think you're never going to win a game. What else could have been done, Kratz? Because I know we touched on this yesterday for Yuri Perez. Like, they, they babied him last year. He's super young. He's got top-end stuff. They're going to miss him for the whole year, and then you're going to baby him back too. I just feel like often the rules don't mean shit. Alex Anthopoulos actually talks about this a lot, where he spent a lot of his career on certain rules and plans, and eventually it was like, not everyone's the same, and we can't go off that formula. So, you know, last year, remember, at one point he was dealing, and they, they sent him down and just kind of shut him down. And then he came back, and he was – Good, not as good. You're just like, uh, what did it mean? He still is getting Tommy John six months later. Yeah, I mean, who's who's come out and said? Who's come out and said? Well, you know what? I think when you shut a big league pitcher down who's six foot eight, and you don't let him just continue to stay in his rhythm, that will cause Tommy John surgery. People will be like, you're an idiot. There's no way. It's because. He throws too many innings. We should have had him throw less innings. And do what? Like, to me, this is a case for letting guys throw more earlier. Or it's the case of this is just going to happen. So what? Get your Tommy John surgery. Come back. I mean, they babied him. They shouldn't have gotten hurt. Haven't we proven, though, that this doesn't work? Haven't we proven that these inning limits, everyone's getting hurt anyway. So why, yes. why are we inning limit? Like we need to maybe throw more. Maybe we need to let these guys throw more instead oh. of throwing. Oh no, you threw 50 innings. Then we'll ramp you up to 70 innings. And you might get to hundred in your fourth year. If you're lucky, if you don't blow out, how about we just let these kids throw, like throw a long toss more, throw more. And I mean, I'm not, not the old guy, but, but I think that like, I know everyone's into weighted balls and we're all chasing velocity. But that's also part of the problem because they don't throw a baseball enough. These kids don't throw a baseball enough. They got an eight eight ounce ball and a twelve ounce ball, and then they're throwing it against the wall. And there's a like, before they start, they never throw a baseball. Like, how about we get about, our arm prepared to throw a baseball? How about not worrying about somebody's velocity when it dips? How about being like, "Hey, are you good? Why is your velocity down?" Just to him. Oh, because I'm just pitching today. You know, I, I'm not quite feeling it. That's cool. Like, you know what? I'm going to sit 90 to 94. I can rear back and give you 97 every once in a while, but I don't need to be 97 first pitch of the game, sit 97 and 99. To me, that's where I think somewhere in there lies the answer. Who's willing to do it? Are organizations willing? Are players willing to do it? I don't know. That's a pitcher question. Well, in the meantime, the Marlins are terrible. <laughs> and the Pirates are good Ooh. right now. So, yes, we can spend a minute on them. They beat the Nationals. Pittsburgh is 6-1 and one to start the season. My First Pirates. place in the NL Central. What? My Pirates. Definitely not Scott's Pirates. Definitely not my Pirates. I mean, they were like this for two months last year. You see anything different? No. Same, Third. same start. They're getting there. They got to learn yeah. how to win. <clears throat> They're learning how to win. After May. They're, after They got to learn how to win after May. Sure. Yeah. Well, say, the season, the season goes Shelton past May. Remember what Shelton said when he was on? What? He was like, if you go back, we had some significant injuries during that time. Right around when their winning stopped. Now maybe they've solidified their team, their core, with – older guys who can help mitigate some of this issue. And they're not just all of a sudden, bang. They're not just calling up their youth. They're calling up like their second level youth. Now, if some of these older guys, some of the current players on the roster get hurt, 
they call up, you know, that first level of players. I don't know. Do I see a difference? This team's going to have to be that gritty team at all times. Whatever gritty means, it just means you're winning one-run games. But they're going to need to be that all the time because they don't have superstars. They have all-stars, but they don't have a superstar that can carry this team. Well, let's not forget O'Neal Cruz went down right when they were hot. Remember, broke his ankle in that play at the plate. Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, that was a huge loss for them. You yes. say what you want, but he was a big, big loss for him. I mean, he's kind of the guy that – if you watch the game yesterday, I mean, he gets on first, it's like a triple. I mean, it's incredible. He gets on first, it is like – he's like three steps, and he's at second, three more steps, he's at third. You're like, damn, this dude's crazy. It's like I mean, Ellie for the Reds. I think O'Neal might be better. I'm just saying, right now. Mm-hmm. Don't kill me, Scott. I, I'm going like, to put on my, oh, whoa, put whoa, on my whoa, Kratz whoa. shield on. here. I like O'Neal Cruz a lot. Not as much as you like Ellie, though, and I said blasphemy about Ellie. Pretty close, though. Okay. Who's younger? Similar profile. They're both Pretty six Ellie's foot 12. They're both huge. They both run. run crazy. They both have crazy exit velocity pop. They both have strong arms. AJ, My tell me. is that tell me this. Ellie is a year younger, but I will find out. Ellie's 22. O'Neal Cruz is 25. Oh. Tell me this, AJ, if you're looking at a lineup and Ellie, whether you think he's good or not, whether you think his 230 career average or whatever his career average is right now is good or not, doesn't he still – isn't he still a force in that lineup in the sense that you look at him and you're like, you can't just give him a free base because he's going to steal it. He can hit the ball out of the ballpark. Like, to me, he – He's too pitchable to me, though. He swings at too many bad pitches, he so he's not a force. If you have a pitcher out there that knows what he's doing, you throw him three breaking balls in his back foot, he's going to punch out. You throw him a fastball over his head, he swings at it. So to me, that's the problem, is that he he, he has too many holes. So, yeah, is, is he scary if he gets on base? And is he scary if you make a mistake? Absolutely, but so is almost every other big league hitter. To, to me, there's too many holes. When you face a guy and you're like, all right, we'll use like Miggy when he was hot, is when he was winning triple crowns, right? I mean, there was a hole like this big up and in, like here, you know, like about this big up and Maybe, in. Right? Yeah. And if you if you didn't hit that spot, he was going to hit a rifle somewhere. He was going <laughs> to rifle it to right or go bridge and left. I mean, it was like you literally had a spot about this big. And if you didn't at least show him something inside, I mean, he was leaning out. All the, it was he was it, that to me. Ellie's hole is bigger, and there's more yep. of them than just one little spot to fire at. Yep. That's you, you always hear speed doesn't slump, Kratzy. That's what you're kind of hinting at, I think, where it's like even if he's not hitting the ball as well as he wants to, he's still dangerous. He's still not someone you want to see in that lineup just for the fact that, hey, we can't let this guy get on base. He might only be hitting, let's say, 200 at the time or, or 180 or whatever it may be, and you're still thinking, hey, we can't let this guy get on base. Then you know you affect lineups and uh, the other team's game plan against you guys. But – He's got some holes right now, but he's still definitely someone you are aware of in that lineup. I just love how we have so many big dudes in the sport right now. Judge is a monster. Ellie's a monster. O'Neal Cruz is a monster. Spencer Jones coming soon is a monster. James Wood is a monster. These are all dudes, I think, 6'6 six, six plus. I, I love it. I said this the other day. I was on a – I forget what city I was on, some radio station. Even just in the four years – that I've been out of the game. This is my fourth season out. The game has gotten bigger and stronger since I've been out. Like, across the board, like, consistently, dudes are just monsters. And I think part of that for hitters is because strikeouts are okay. Before, you'd always hear, like, ah, big, tall guys are going to strike out more. Their mechanics are going to break down. Strikeouts are fine. I just think, like, it's crazy that you think both those guys, Ellie – and O'Neal are playing shortstop. And Judge doesn't even strike out that much. It's the evolution of all sports. Every every game's going to start getting bigger, faster, stronger always, in some retrospect or not. That's where, like, the basketball, you got Durant and then to Wembyamba now. And then baseball's going to be following suit and football thereafter. Yep. Uh, Always happens. One more. One more from last night. 
And we'll get to Juan Soto's cleats for their home opener. It, it was like Sunday night baseball. Thursday night baseball. White Sox. White Sox Royals. Royals got center stage, and it was decent for a while, and then it was a mess. Was that the seventh or eighth? When they I think scored it was all the the seventh. Runs. They scored three runs on a ground ball to like the shortstop. Uh, Bases loaded. He threw it. He threw it away, and Salvi hit it, and do the make carousel the ground ball. There was three runs that scored on a ground ball to short. Eight runs, seventh, two out, three run error on that mm-hmm. shoe make play, and then Melendez hit a homer after that. Yep. Got bad. Fast. And you know what it did? It killed Pap's pick. Because mm, okay. he's a sucker. <laughs> yeah, because he was talking trash to me and he got suckered. <laughs> <laughs> so, not much else to say, but bad AL Central baseball. But I thought, no, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to let that go. <laughs> wow. Bad schedule. <laughs> bad schedule, too. One night game in the first week of the year. Agreed. Thank you. I get it that they have to do a lot of puzzle piece action, but we just started the year. It was like opening day. The amount of people that were like, how come there's not a game? There was a bunch of teams that were off. A bunch of the West Coast teams were off. I know, but I don't know. Figure it out. All you have is White Sox Royals? No, I mean, when they scheduled this last year, they didn't know the White Sox were going to be not good and the Royals (laughs) were going to be better. You think last year they were like, guys. National schedule. Here it is, all by itself. That game wasn't on any national broadcast. No, I know, but a lot of people buy the national package, and so <laughs> if they're looking for a game, this is the time to shine too. There's, it's not football season. There's nothing happening. Like last night, I was forced to watch White Sox Royals. I knew you were rewarded for the epic game. I was rewarded with the See? inning that never ended. You would have never, you would have never ever watched that if it wasn't for that. Give me the schedule, and I can do it better. Period. So you want to go work for the league? I'd like them you to. Tried ha- that. They can you already outsource. tried that. I did. By the way. Yeah, trader. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they can outsource it to FT. We will set uh. the schedule for free. Juan Soto is making his debut at Yankee Stadium. They're obsessed with him. He's 0 for 1. He's 1 for his last 13. Mm-hmm. He's 0 for 1 today. He'll be fine. His cleats are sick, though. How do you describe them? New York City, Subway, Broadway, ballpark vibes? Kip, you like these? Sure. Enough. <laughs> there we go. I got to see him closer. Yeah. Okay. There's hey, the coolest part is the laces light up. Yeah. Oh, that's I badass right that. there. That's. Oh. That's wait, the lights right come there. with the. Wait, the laces that's... light up? Yeah, that's fire right there for real. You what? can't have that happen. Right? Light LED, light. Have, the laces, laces have LED lights in them, so they light up. Now Duh. the problem is they're playing a day game, so it's not really going to do much. Like right there, they're flashing. You can't see it, but. Oh, I mean, that's, that's sick. That's kind of sick right that's there. That's festival vibes. Like the LA lights? Are those yeah. old yeah, shoes yeah. that would light up? Yeah. Yeah. I would walk this. All of the lights. All of the lights. I mean, that, that's, listen, those are, I mean, he's trying everything he can to fit in. And those are, listen, people get behind kicks and people are all into that stuff. And, with the way Major League Baseball has gone, and I know there's a bunch of people. It was we had a guy on was it last week or this week where he's like, ah, these guys are not wearing the same colored shoes and all oh, that. I think it's goodness. awesome. I think it's awesome. That's- I think this is really cool. I would have loved, like I said, I would have loved to have been able to rock something like this because I would have had lights. I would have had, I would have had things that like stuck out and like stab somebody in the foot if they were trying to score. You know, like a you. This is like a James Bond spinny spike or something. You know. <laughs> Would there be any reason MLB or something would say they can't have the lights, have it light up like that during games? I'm sure. I'm sure, though, there will be a reason, but. Yeah. It doesn't matter, though, because now they're out there on Twitter and Instagram. They're a thing. So it doesn't matter. They can be, they can say, oh, we don't, we, we can't wear it. Then it becomes a bigger thing. Yep. Because then all Juan Soto has to do is say, oh, they wouldn't let me wear the lighty shoes. And then people, then people then in New York public. are going crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Although. What, yeah, if he could, could, what if he could control the lighting? If he's like on second base and they start lighting it up because he sees breaking ball to the hitter, Ooh. because you give a thumbs I'm up. I'm just saying what, what? What? Yeah, but I'm just saying the hitter sees the light, <laughs> shoes lighting up. He's like a breaking ball's coming. I mean, that's a cool he way. Pushes to, a that's button a cool and it turns thing. red or something. Yeah. <laughs> Beep. Beep. <laughs> what if eventually they have watches on and they use that 
Oh wait, no. What if they have? What if they have a trash can somewhere and they try that? <laughs> exit. Yeah. I'm gonna shit in our game sometimes. Keep it simple, like dude. Movie. That would be actually kind of smart. If it flashes once, it's a fastball. If it flashes twice, it's a curveball. Smart. It's not a bad play, Kip. You might have given the Yankees an idea. I think Number I just gave one. MLB an idea on how to get rid of them. Number one in the clubhouse right now, shoes for the year. Everybody else is second place yeah. until you prove differently to me. Agreed. Money moves time. Let's make a deal. Show me the money. <laughs> Show me the money! Show me the money! <laughs> That's a good one. Is that Pavel Bond? Yes. <laughs> that, that every was Pavel Bond. And the fan that caught Shohei Otani's six-figure first home run ball. What? Again, I don't understand why that's such a big six-figure ball. Did you see the article? I saw the whole article. They wouldn't authentic. Like, why was it such a big deal? It wasn't like it wasn't a milestone homer. But it's his first homer as a Dodger. The Dodgers are an international sensation. And internationally, Shohei Otani is an icon. So whether it's someone in the U.S. or internationally, they're saying that the ball's worth at least 100 Gs. And so there was a fan who got that baseball, and Sam Blum of The Athletic did great investigative work and said apparently she was separated from her husband and pressured into giving up the ball for a, quote, low ball offer. The security staff separated husband and wife, and then... In the article, it says, left them little choice but to hand over the baseball for what they considered a low ball offer. The Dodgers initially dangled two caps signed by Otani in exchange for a ball that an auction house representative told the Athletic would be worth at least $100,000. The fam said that the tactics from team officials included the threat of refusing to authenticate the baseball if she decided to take it home. This is still from the article. This was no trivial matter, a lack of authentication, could significantly reduce the ball's value and place the runs or the onus on uh, the fam to prove its authenticity. No matter what, we can get into the, the negotiating part of this. But first off, Kip, the, a team can't treat a fan like that. That's absurd. Not if, if most of that story is true, that's not a good look at all for the Dodgers or just how if whoever handles this on their end, um, the cornering them, the separating her from the husband, the refusing to authenticate like there's so many just turns where they took the wrong option to do here um and that's why i don't think the story's over i feel like they're gonna do right by her i hope um so i think there's gonna be more of this to play out but so far it's really not a good look because even if it comes out to be over 100k let's say or down the road where she they find out it is or it goes for that much and now you look there and you're, you've already got this bad publicity and you've offered them just a signed hat or two signed hats. Um, too much information's out there already where you look bad. So I think they'll be correcting it down the road. I hope again. Yeah. Game used jersey for sure signed. Start to make up a little bit of that value. You, you, there's enough for them to make up not or to save face, uh, I think. Not to look good, but to save face. Well, here, here's... The, the biggest pressure was they didn't authenticate it. If they want to, and you can, if they don't get it authenticated, the ball becomes worthless. Yeah, that, that was the, all they. I mean, that's you know separated. I don't know about all that, and they pressured them. But as soon as they said we want to authenticate it, that ball is worthless. It, it, because if you don't have it authenticated, she can't go to MLB and be like, I caught this. They, you know, they can look at video and she can take, oh look at me, I caught it. But how do we know you didn't drop it? How do we know you didn't switch it? It has to be authenticated right then. They should be doing that for a ball. Agreed. Like I, I agree. Trash but move. that was their pressure move. That was their big move they That's had. That's up. like the ace in the hole. Like, we won't authenticate it. Give it to us or else. It's an There's offer you can't she, refuse. There's nothing she can do. Because yeah. then she can take it to the auction house and be like, I caught this. And be like, ah, where's the hologram? And they're, we don't have, it's not there. Then how do we know? Then they could do a video that gets a billion views. Doesn't matter. Melting the but baseball it, and, and nope. make the money that way and say, thanks for authenticating this. This is the real ball. Now you don't have your first homer. Yeah, AJ's 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 two thousand four All Star Game last out ball not authenticated. Two thousand two. That's because they didn't have authenticate. They didn't authenticate stuff back then. AJ still has the last ball, right? The last ball from it's the last great. out of the tie only tie game ever. Yeah, it's over there. Yeah, the tie All Star Game, but it's not authenticated. But they didn't authenticate stuff back then. They 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 just didn't. 
that wasn't how they did it. It was just like, we take your word for it that it's that. And I'm like, well, yeah, I did catch the last. I'm trying to find a, here. It's a trash move by them. That one? Not, not yours, but uh, hold on. Uh, can we, here, I'll show you what, this is my thousandth hit. But Did they write on it before you hit it? My thousandth hit. Here's what a, the hologram looks like. See the little hologram? That's the authentication? That's the authentication. And then the guy takes it and kind of see it's kind of hard to see but it's a little the little thing right there but so a guy there's an authenticator he puts that on there and then he writes in his book whatever the number is there's like a little tiny number on there and did it did it and then if you go to mlb.com they'll say authenticate and you type in that number and it'll tell you what the ball is so Who that's how it? they do it got it yeah and they have like a bunch of authenticators running around well that's messed up fumble they should not do that to that fan Kip, what's your coolest authenticated thing? Uh, like the mask, the mask, the mask behind me has it has the authenticated thing, but it's been bronze, so it, it's a little hologram. <laughs> uh, bronze, <no. laughs> you know, it's there, but it's bronze. <laughs> My main piece would be a, a, a baseball with mantle, Ted Williams, and DiMaggio. And he's saying, I, I have something authenticated, but I can't find it right now. But I'm looking for it. It comes with like. Yeah, I have yeah, like, like the authentication, big, like a yep, card. It says this, yeah. and it's like yeah. this, this like it's size. like a certificate. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. So, so it's not so on okay. the baseball. The sticker's not on the baseball. I can't hear him. Oh, you got unclipped. I think. Oh, the uh, no, that's oh, awesome. That, that's pretty. That's pretty freaking sweet. That's yeah. That's that's the coolest thing I got, hands down. Um, I don't even keep that with my like other memorabilia. Oh. Yeah, because that's like real. Okay, I need just, help. Not just your equipment. Kratz, your PR for the Dodgers. How do you fix this, both publicly, if you need to make a statement, and privately with the fam? How do you fix this? Sorry, we handled it the way that we did. And we're reaching out to said fan and husband, inviting them onto the field, and giving them season tickets for the rest of the season. And a lot of swag. I like that one because it's not like – you're not making Otani do anything on that end at the nope. same time because it's not Otani's fault. Otani has nothing to do with it of the way trying to get the baseball. He wasn't asking for them to get to the baseball, so I think the Dodgers need to handle this on their accord. Yep. It also makes it like the team and the league owns the baseballs, but there are a ton of fans that go to games that care more about trying to get a foul ball or a BP homer than anything else. What's so, that douchey douche's name that – uh, goes around every stadium. Don't show me while I'm saying. <laughs> You're afraid of it. We know who Scott's afraid of. What's no, that I'm guy's not name? afraid. Zach Campbell. He's the Ooh. guy who goes to all the ballparks. Well, wow. grabs all the baseballs. There was a big deal. We played. We played in Fort Bragg in 2016. We played mm -hmm. that game in Fort Bragg. It was only supposed to be family and military people. Somehow he got a ticket and he was like posting it. And everyone, there were some pissed off people. Probably bought it from Scalper or something. But I, I, I thought you, I don't know how he got on the base and all that. Like that doesn't. This uh, was on the arm. This was on yeah. Fort Bragg on the base. They built the stadium on a base. Hmm. And then they ripped it down. That's Good question. Unbelievable. But he was there. I don't know. All right. Next up, we'll go to a tougher story. We we covered the Sacramento A's, although we're not allowed to call them that, according to the team. But we want to get your. Oh, Kratz, I'll give you the info. They asked them if they're going to be the Sacramento A's, and they said, no, they're just going to be the A's. Stop it. They're just the A's. They're not the Vegas A's. They're not the Oakland A's. They're not the Sacramento A's. They're just the A's. So does their jersey on the road just say the A's? The A's or athletics. Someone made the case that no one calls the Angels, the Anaheim Angels, or the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. I was like, True. But still, this is different. Are are the A's are the A's City Connect jerseys going to be nothing? They're just going to wear jock straps and sliders because they're not connecting with any city. Well, no, it's going to be armadillos because their owner has an armadillo fetish. <laughs> Derek Cavall's Der, David Cavall's interview yesterday with Casey Pratt killed me. I know I'm off topic here, but we're talking about the A's. He was like. So does this mean now that you guys are going to to uh, allow replies and have more connection with fans? And 
David Dave Caval was like, he's like, he always has his <laughs> eyes like this big. He's like, we're gonna really try to do as much as we can because this has moved us along in this in the future of the A's, and we're excited about the new. It, and Casey was like, "You never even answered the question." It was so hilarious. <laughs> He's a bot. He looks like a bot. Uh, but this this tweet, uh, it's so weird because it's not called Twitter anymore. So is this X? What do you call this? This X tweet. I mean, this marks the spot. Tweet. Uh, no family room, no mother's room, no shade or bathrooms in the bullpen, only one shared batting cage. And he thought the Coliseum. So it was MLB. We've asked this question. They're going to come in and just, they're going to have to redo it because the clubhouses aren't very good. Well, the PA has already made some complaints, so they're going to have to fix things. And that's Trevor Hildenberger. He played, he, he played out there. I'm assuming minor league yeah. specialist Kratz, right? I, I assume so. I, I'm not sure yeah. if he, if he actually played out there, but it seems like he knows. What, what are they going to? Mark, our EP had a great question. What are they, you know, the the three little letters they put like O A O A K for like the teams? What are they going to put like on the scheduling and stuff? A A A A A A A A S O S M I A K A apostrophe S. I mean, what do you put? Because normally, like, if you look at like if you watch a game right now, right, it says Oakland, Detroit, right, Toronto, New York Yankees. They're just going to say A's. Hey, 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 forget about it. You know, in the corner of the scoreboard, it has usually the three little letters are on a betting app or on an ESPN or MLB. It has the three little letters. Just going to say A's. Or SAC, if someone has the SAC to put SAC. (laughs) M-E-H. M-E-H is what it's going to say. Well, let let me read this. And then we're clearly, Kip, we can't even... We can't get over ourselves here, but I'll, I'll read Buster Olney's tweet and then tell me your thoughts on being a player in this situation, just how it's handled on a daily basis. But Buster Olney said, it appears the difference between what Oakland offered and what the A's wanted was about $35 million or so over three years, or about the same that the Angels are paying reliever Robert Stevenson. Meanwhile, owners overseeing an industry worth many tens of billions of dollars stand by and watch their weakest franchise put on this cheap circus and do nothing incomprehensible and a terrible business decision and also they have an option they might not open this shit until 2029 in vegas like they keep adding years it was supposed to be 27 now it's 28 sacramento might be hosting them until uh, through 28 it's just a bad look and they won't even like hey sacramento thanks for letting us use your stadium but we won't claim you or use your name to represent us at all too and then um this is i i um, as the player side of me wants people to kind of pay attention to this because it's like the owners are fighting with the owners on a bunch of stuff and cities. So like when you see players fight with owners, whether it's a holdout or lockout, it's like you're getting a glimpse. Like it's they're doing a lot on their own to fight with each other too over money that just isn't that much to them. So I don't get I don't get how thirteen you said twelve to thirteen million a year, thirty five over three. That's what, what they were fighting over them. with the A's. Yeah. Yeah. Is what they're is what or over Oakland. Them. Sorry, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. It's I understand it's a business and under the 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 bottom line, but at what point do you just are you creating more problems for yourself than solving them? Now they've, been, they've already been causing problems. I mean, this, <laughs> yeah. I mean, from yesterday, from from John Fisher saying. Man, I can't wait to see Aaron Judge hit homers against us. Like, what? Wait, not, what? Not, not even our own like, team. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He couldn't even name one player on his own team that was <laughs> hitting homers for him. He should have said like Galoff or Langoliers or you know Estuary Ruiz has already <laughs> been here, so he's going to come back and play on another team. Uh, it's it's just it's insanity to me that he named other players. I'm like, yeah, I can't wait to watch some of these superstars hit homers against us. Wait, what? That encapsulates everything bad about what this dude represents. Doesn't give a fuck about winning or his own team or anything besides making money and knowing that when Aaron Judge is there, he is born or from or whatever the area and there's Yankee fans. So they will spend money at his park. You know, like some owners actually want to win games. That is so far down the totem pole for him. I mean, he also grew up a Giants fan, by the way. It's this is. This is like a nonstop laughing stock. If I wrote a movie and sent you the script, you'd be like, dude, this is so unrealistic. It's, it's just, it's too much. 
Now, as as a player, I know I would I would make the best of the situation as best I can. I think, and knowing these other two guys too, they would too. I'm sure there would be comments daily about what a shithole it is or just why are we here or stuff like that. But I know professionally the three of us or something would make the most of it. But if you've been trying, if you get called up in the next two years to the A's and you're like, oh, I go get a play in a big league stadium and then that's where you're going or that's your experience that you get to, or maybe that's your cup of coffee is during these two years or something, or is that it's that's, that sucks. There's just no way around it. That sucks. Yeah. There'd be a lot of re trade requests of, you know, I absolutely, if you're Ross stripling and you got traded there next year and you're like, Oh, I went from the giant stadium to the Sacramento river cat stadium. <laughs> Wait a second. This sucks, dude. What? I mean, what how are they, they going to, how are they going to, I mean, unless they overpay, there's not going to be guys that are going to want to go there. Right. I mean, there's good. They'll get the guys, they'll yep. get some veteran guys that are kind of near the end and, and, you know, hey, give me one year and I'll hang on for a year and hopefully get traded to a winner. But they're not going to – It's they're going to have a heart. And I know that Fisher and Caval have come out and said, we're going to up our payroll to mid-150s by the time we get to Vegas. Well, <laughs> bullshit. They're going to have to pay – So they're going to have to overpay guys so much to go to a AAA stadium. I'm sorry. Which, they don't, which they're not do worried about that. Go mm -hmm. ahead, Scott. I was saying they're not worried about it because the other dude, the Kings owner who's who's – Best buds with Fisher, and they probably have a million side deals. He was talking about Otani being there. They, they are not worried about the, their own team. And it is actually the perfect excuse. They will document this. They'll go to free agency. They'll say, we made a few offers to some players, and they said no. So I know we told you in our report, and our presentation to the owners, that we were going to up payroll and be competitive, but no one said yes. It is actually the perfect scheme. Uh, Ken Rosenthal in Fair Territories just called it a charade. He's like, this has just been a, a never-ending charade that embarrasses the sport. There's no repercussions. So why would they Why would they change? Why would they sign anybody? There's no repercussions. Why would they add more staff? They're completely understaffed in the minor leagues in the A's system. Call a coach that you know that's in the minor leagues for the A's. It doesn't mean they're bad coaches. It means... Like when other teams are running four coaches out there, they're running three. When other teams are running three coaches out there, they're running two. They're completely underpaid. But to, my question was going to be, which would be worse? Having your call up, you know, let's say you just get a short cup of coffee and your big league experience is the COVID season when your family and friends couldn't come and watch any of your games and there was no fans or playing the same amount of time in Sacramento, like that's your big league call up. Which which would you rather have? COVID. You're in a big league stadium. It just feels more minor league. I don't know. <laughs> to be in the Sacramento one, yeah. You might be more comfortable during the game. You might have a turn that cup of coffee into a little bit more longer stay if you're just that comfortable. So you're playing in minor league stadiums to minor league stadium. That's your jump. It's not even a new stadium. The stadium was built 25 years ago, right? Because I played there in 2000. So this, is, this isn't this is even like one of the new ones either. This is an older AAA stadium. And so, I don't know. Hey, who's, just, who's, whose responsibility does it fall under? If it, is it Oakland's then ownership to remodel like the clubhouses at all for Sacramento? Does MLB have any – do they need to step in at all and add a little to it to help out? Or is it just strictly on Oakland's hand? Good question. Because all the other renovations, Blue Jays renovations are the ones that we always go to. But that's when they did it. MLB stepped in and paid some some millions of dollars, whether it's two or five million, to do those renovations. And some of them were temporary in Buffalo. Because it's still their product. It's still the MLB's product. I just want to reiterate this too. Maybe Kendall this major league. This is Major League Baseball. You guys are talking about like a COVID disaster situation. There, there's nothing wrong here besides a poison owner who hates baseball. So it's 2024 right now. Next year, there's a team playing games in a minor league ballpark in 2025. Gosh, I hope I get to go do a game there. <laughs> 2026, 2027, <laughs> and maybe that. 2028. Their stadium ain't going to be done by 28. They haven't, even, they haven't even broke it. Again, until I see them actually take one of them golden shovels and put it in the ground and John Fisher throws it on Dave Cavall. <laughs> 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 I mean, we haven't Dave even Cavall seen like that. This. We, we've seen a rendering of a stadium that looks like it's out of 
like 2,000 years from now with like a clear wall and like all this crazy stuff. But we haven't seen them break down. Tropicana is still there. I thought they just. Oh, did they it. finally demolish it? I think it? they just tore okay. it. Okay. But they still haven't dug a shovel where they're like, hey, time to go. Because I think, is it the Rays that have done that before and the stadium didn't even come through? Wasn't there a team that I thought maybe it was the Rays? They took a shovel on the ground and they're like, here's where we're building our new stadium. And they're like, nope, just kidding. Here, my biggest thing with this is what does it, what is the reason we have the CBA? It's so that baseball does not become a monopolistic, Major League Baseball does not become a monopolistic group and not even worry about the product on the field. This is a prime example of where the Players Association, it'll be a big miss if things don't change for the A's team based on the Players Association keeping MLB accountable for this situation because they're not even they're not trying to put a product on the field that gives a semblance of them not being monopolistic they cannot be a monopoly and say well we're a big league team it doesn't really matter because there's no other there's no other people in town there's no other entertainment in town you can't go anywhere else to get a big league game so we're holding this and we're going to ruin it because we're holding this this should be blocked did the Reds owners say the same thing? Like, where else are you going to go? Oh, yeah. Well, that was about the team. Mm-hmm. In this when case, it was two or three years ago. No, it was Maybe. last year. It was, it was last, last year, year, I think. No. Yeah. It was last year. He said, <laughs> I think it was we're not last selling year. tickets. Where else are you going to no, go watch a game? I was working for the league. I know I was Dude, working Dude, you were for not. The you were working for us. We're not selling tickets? Opening day. What, did he, what did he say? They weren't selling tickets or a lot of tickets or something in uh, – What's his name? Castellini? Not the dad, the kid, not Bob, the, the son, I think, came out and said, mm-hmm. like, where, it was 2022. Oh, April. It was two years ago then? I know, because I was working at the league, and obviously we didn't cover it. Where you want to go back to? <laughs> You're shipping me back to my old job. Where are you going to go? Well, you could, the, the old age old concept for every team here is you are allowed to sell. But, won't, but, but think about it. It won't sell. Like, yes, that was different. But this, that, that was they a were completely different about thing. transactions. Yeah, that was and, a know, completely different thing. And the Reds, guys. and listen, I give yeah. the Reds credit the last two years. They've made transactions. They've done a bunch of things. They did. Are moving in the right direction. They got a chance to be very good this year. Yeah. Very, very competitive. Nick Crawl. This, this is as Nick Crawl needs right? to hear, though. What? But yes, this is a trainer. This is like like what what Kip and Kratz were saying. How, how is this allowed? Can the players just say we're not doing this? No, no. I don't think it's in the CBA. They're not allowed. Oh, so they, they're so. What if can every team do this? Can every can you guys all just play in minor league parks now? What's what's the line? This is this is the this is why we have the CBA, and it has to be in there that there is a level, and this is what Tony Clark always talks about. There's a level of expectation from not having a roommate on the road to staying in five star hotels. They have to set that level of expectation. And again, I feel like the owners in this case, not all the owners, in this case, they found a caveat and realized you can't do anything about it. But this is where they need to step in and use those expectations and say, and I know this is what Tony Clark and the Players Association, whoever's heading this up, is doing, saying, okay, I get it, you're moving here, but there has to be a covered bullpen. We can't have pitchers getting you know, sitting out in the baking sun. There has to be a pisser in the bullpen. There has to be a clubhouse where people don't have butts and faces when they're changing. All that stuff, like, has to happen. It happened in Buffalo. It happened in Dunedin for the Blue Jays. Mm-hmm. And, the MO, and the PA came in and said, listen, this isn't acceptable. And they fixed it. But now, I mean, this is, this is going to be different because this is years of it. The, the, the Blue Jays thing was for what? 30 games or whatever it was, it wasn't, it wasn't for the long haul. Mm -mm. This is for the long haul. So who's going to spend the money? And what, what if it's not acceptable Do the players go and say, we're not going to play there. That's what I'm saying. Then what happens? That, that was a disaster. That was a pandemic. Yeah. This is on purpose. I know they're doing this on purpose. Can the players strike? We fell the the stadium crumbled. cannot strike. You can't. So you can't do shit. The players can't do anything. This is like when they change the rules, the players have no say. That's like you say. That's like you no, saying no, I signed a contract to come and work somewhere, and you're like, I'm not going to. Not only would, not only would they lose their job, 
that would be breach of contract, which would eliminate who, who what guaranteed player is going to be like, I'm making 40 million over the next four years. When we go into Oakland, I'm not going. That's a breach of contract. No, I'm talking about the home team. I'm not talking about the road team. I'm talking about the home uh, team. I mean, they'll just call yeah. up the next, the next yeah. group of guys. Yeah. Yeah. They'll call up Esra Ruiz. They'll call him back up. They won't you call play, him up. You got to play in Sacramento. 68 bags. They don't want him up there. Yeah, it's too many. No, uh, I don't know. What a, what read a trainer. It, it. I can't get over it. I, can I can't. We, I mean, can we get somebody from the Player Association to come on? I mean, we've had Tony Clark sure. on a few times. Yeah. To talk about this, the specifics. Yeah, because this this seems like – I know that, the again, the Player Association, they have a rules committee. There's five owners and four players, and the, and the owners <laughs> always vote together, and the players never have any say in it. So is there a – somebody that – in the players union association that can say, tell us if this, cause I don't know the CBA inside and out. Do you, anybody? I mean, this has also What's never been, this has also never happened before. It's just, What's it's crazy legal? that you can't block this. You know what happens with CBAs nowadays, Kip? Cause this happened in the last fight. Part, the players obviously are trying to make themselves money. That's there's no doubt. That's part of their job. They're stakeholders in the game. The other thing that they have to battle is competitiveness. Like they have to negotiate to, to get a draft lottery because there's too much tanking. Like it's not something that they all sit down and agree on. It's one side. That's why people are siding with players more and more because it's not just millionaires versus billionaires. It's game versus don't care. It's competitiveness versus don't care. It's we're going to have four or five years in a minor league park versus we should be the big leagues. It's our uniforms should look like their big league uniforms versus someone's paying us to make crappier versions. I think that's why you don't see any big changes come from CBAs. I think you see small little increments to see kind of just get what they can. It's never no, no side really ever gives up the full change just to make the game better. And it's, it's a sad fact. It's just, you, you, you don't give up anything without getting something is kind of yep. the way it's negotiated. Um, so that's kind of all the, the way it's always been though. But why did they have to? My point is, why did they have to give that up? Like, I, I know the answer, but I don't. Like, when when did the fight become? Oh, you want more competitiveness? What are you giving us for it? Oh, you don't want us to be <laughs> in a minor league ballpark? What are you giving us for that? Do you know what I'm saying? That's the part that I do not understand. Oh, you want a draft lottery because the same teams just want to tank all the time? What are you giving us? What do we get for that? <laughs> what? You're, don't you're just, using. Don't we all want to win? Using... This is your asset too. Fucking You're using it. too much reason and rationale here, and that's yeah. not that's not the case. Um, you, you're you're going under the assumption, yeah. You're lawyering the fact that hey, this helps all of us when they're going into it. Probably, how can this help my side? Yeah. Yes, there's yes, there's the undertone of I want to help the entire product of the MLB and the game of baseball, but it's just not always the case, and especially in negotiations, you don't rarely is that taken that 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 case that side of does this help everybody? Then let's do this. It's never that easy. It's a tough look. It's a very tough look. You just look. feel bad. You feel bad for your Oakland fans too. You really do. Because if it's – let's say you, you you follow this train all the way down uh, to, and they open in Vegas. Then they can spend in free agency. So they'll finally open the pocketbooks and get a couple good free agencies or something for that. In a new city of Vegas, it would be easier to bring in better talent. More guys will want to play there, new stadium. And the Vegas gets to reap all the benefits of that. They'll be a great city, a fantastic sports city for them. But you just really do feel for the Oakland fans on this one. And I don't think we have to worry about it. Uh, but I was I was reading some of these messages. Uh, what happens if Oakland's – again, sadly, I don't think we'll have to worry about it. What if they're good and make a playoffs? What A World Series at Sacramento? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> like a World what, Series in Sacramento. But that's what's wrong. If we don't have to worry about one team, guarantee you the next three years, this team's going to be so bad, they're not going to make the playoffs. That is the core problem right there. And Mark yep. even said it later on in our in our chat. If they're so fine with this stadium, why don't they get a – they're going to be there for three years. Why don't they get the All-Star game in three years? Give it to them. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, wait, this actually oh, sounds good. So either they're good and they're in the playoffs and we have playoff ball in Sacramento or they're fucking terrible. They probably didn't live up to their promise of investing in the team. And then they have all of this awful 
tank momentum heading into a city that has literally nothing. There is nothing to do in Vegas. So there's <laughs> no competition. So if you go to Vegas with an awful team run by an awful person, they're going to come to the games. Oh, wait, it's Vegas. You need to go in there freaking gangbusters. So either they're good and they're a playoff Sacramento team or they're awful. And Vegas is like, please do not deliver this garbage. We're gonna take ecstasy and go to the and go to the sphere <laughs> over over watching <laughs> over watching guys play. That's Scott. Phoenix that's Scott's dream. <laughs> <sighs> that's what I feel like when I cover this story. I mean, last thing, we we got that John Fisher quote about him kissing Aaron Judge's toes <laughs> live during the show. And a couple of people texted me after the show and they were like, did you really not know about that quote? And I was like, yeah, we got the quote during the show. They were like, was that a bit where you're like, did he really say that? And I was like, no, I was making sure that no one was screwing with us and that it was a real quote. And we found out live on the air that it was a real quote. <laughs> That's why we had a hard time understanding it. That they was, were like, that was what? my fault. I said, I said, is that real? Because it wasn't in quotation marks. And I'm like, there's no way that a grown man that is involved in something for his livelihood actually said something like that. And yet, so I was the one that said, is that real? So that was good. Let's, let's clip that conversation. Mm. This is what this show is for. <laughs> All right, deep breath. On to much better things. Angel Hernandez. It's hot corner time. <laughs> much better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As soon as I try to take a deep breath. Uh, hey, we talked about the Mets winning. We talked about Soto's cleats. We did some of the fun stuff. You got to go through the heavy hitting topics. And we had a ton of requests to talk about Angel Hernandez. He actually might be good for the game. People know him. They want to see him. It's 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 watching a car wreck. It is watching a car wreck. So we have a little clip. We'll show it. He's saying it's a strike. Yes, he's saying that he swung, and that's why he called it a strike. No, see, that's that's just he didn't swing at all. That is wild. There's no way he can call that a swing. What do you mean? He did. <laughs> I found one way. Craig Monroe and Jason Benetti. Uh, he did. Do you guys remember American Idol, like, first season when everyone was watching back then? Not everyone, because I didn't watch. A lot of the I country no was like, going I watched it. Do you remember the, the dude, was it William Hung, who was so bad? Mm, that, he, I do like, remember that guy. He was a little famous for a minute. Yeah. Because you, you didn't want to look away, or you, you just were like, I just want to see how, how this sounds. I mean, they, Shebang, American Idol Shebang. is just as – Exactly. Yeah. American <laughs> Idol was just as popular back then for the uh, – Bad performers or the, the, the auditions, the auditions. You want so, to see the worst auditions. Here it is. You want to see the worst dump audition every week. Here it is. Dude, it looks like it was catcher's interference on that play anyway. So even if he did swing, shouldn't he get first? Like you look like you hit the catcher's glove on the swing. Angel doesn't know what Watch. the CI is. Doesn't that look like so, catcher's inter Like you hit the catcher. It does look close. It does look close. So I was about to ask, is this reviewable? And it's not because he called it a swing, correct? Yeah, not a foul tip. I mean, not a not a hit by pitch. You can review a hit by pitch. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you can't review a swing. You can't review a foul tip, a swing, <laughs> or, or man, or, Angel. Every every time I see a check swing, I talked about it last year. Every time I see a check swing, I think of Angel Hernandez, because him and CB Buckner uh -huh. both told me at separate times they look at the pitchers at the hitters' eyes. So if you would watch the actual live, like from behind the swing, that's how he checks if guys swing or not. He goes like this, like the pitch, the pitch is thrown and there's a swing and he'll go and looks up at the guy's eyes. And I asked him, I said, I said, why? I said, why do you look up at the hitter's eyes? He goes in this, like, he always has this face. He's always like, <laughs> he's like, they'll let you know. If you know, <laughs> they'll let you know. The eyes tell everything. What? And he, he makes it very – he'll look right at him. He'll look right at him. So I guess he's trying to see if they – I guess they're trying to see if they're, they're lying or not. Whoa. I, I'll look at those oh, eyes. Baby. Yeah, oh, seriously. Wow. Eyes. wow. That was eyes. a sneak – did we have to pay extra for that sneak peek? Oh, just, we, was that blue steel? Male model Fridays. 
That was, I mean, Whit, come on back. We want you. What's tough is, oh, never mind. Oh, you, guys, there he is. You, guys, you guys talking about me? Yeah, yeah right. the That's hair is swag. hair. It's wow. delicious. I love the hair. The it's denim real. shirt. I mean, is that is denim that a, shirt? Is that a pullover? It's kind of cold. It's a shacket. It's kind of cold here, you know? <laughs> shacket. What the hell is a shacket? <laughs> it's a, sh- it's a, it's a, shirt, a jacket. shirt jacket. It's no, but is that a denim thing? shirt under your shacket? Uh, yeah, it's like a, it's, it's denim. It's soft, it's softer denim. Are you, I'm are you, big, are uh, you DOD right now? Are you denim on denim, Canadian tuxedo? <laughs> no, this is not denim. No, I mean Man. your pants. What's you have pants? Jeans, you have on? jeans on? No, no, I got, uh, not, it's not denim. It's just like a Look page, at that. Je- page pants. Look at that fit. Man, you dress I'm up for I'm games. I'm glad we just went through all my fun. My whole outfit. I appreciate that, guys. We did. We did. That was it's nice. Got the fade. It's, it's working. It's yeah. he's got it today. Magnum. Yeah. Are you, can mm. you turn both ways, or you just turn left? <laughs> Not an uh, amputee. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm an amputee turner. Yep, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, how's life? You you got your first week with the Phils. How is it? It's great. I love Philadelphia. Um, had some just incredible food since we've been there. Um, homestand was. You know, it was good. It was we wasn't exactly the way we pictured it going. Um, but we're two and four, and last year I think at this time we were one and five. So we'll call that progress. That's a game. Right, so let's get, game. Let, let, forget the baseball. Let's dig into your new city. Cheese steak. What's your favorite cheese steak? Angelo's yeah. has been has been the spot. Okay. Do you go so, whiz yeah. or no whiz? Uh, I go I go provolone. And um, no onions for me, so wood out. Okay. And then do you, you know, do you go like big one and then you get fries and cheese fries or just, you know, you're just, you're so healthy and so modelistic that you just, you know, can't do that. I, I get the big one. Yeah. Well, well, it depends on how hungry I am. I mean, I'm not, if you're not that hungry, you can't, eat a, you can't take down a big one, but okay. uh, no, I get, I get a big one when I can. Have you First been to Reading Market yet? Have you been to Reading Market and had of one of Kratz's family's famous Amish don- Amish donuts they have there? Oh, we lost some phone call. Phone you call. got a call. Sorry, that, hey. was, that was my wife. Oh, oh, it's okay. well, That's more important than us. That that actually is more important than us. Have, have you been to Reading Market yet and had one of Kratz's uh, family Amish donuts yet? Uh, I have not. I have mm, not. Tell me, I, I need to go. It sounds like. Yes. Tell him, Kratz. Tell him you know me. Tell them you know me, and you just when they hand it to you, you can just leave. Just, uh, you don't even okay. have to pay. Just tell them you know me. <laughs> All right, I'll do that. I'll do and that. You, and AJ Wait. and AJ needs to figure this out. Okay, it's yes, it's whiz, but you say it's wit or not. Okay, it's so wit or Maryfield. That's what I mean. Like this could be a free. This could be a free thing for you. Like it's cheese wit. Dude, W-I-T. he's heard this 9,000 times already. I, I promise you that. They yes. were bothering him in spring training when he first got I thought, there. I thought. I thought the wit was was onions. So it's either wit or wit out. I thought they, I thought the wit was meant uh, you want onions or not. Onions and cheese and the cheese whiz. Okay. So I was confused. I thought it was whiz wit, like whiz, cheese whiz with onions or whiz without, like cheese whiz without onions. Yes. Are you sure? I'm- no, it's with <laughs> his, wife needs it. his wife needs it. He hung up on you. He hung up on you. He's not the, he's not the first one. He's like, man, uh, we got to talk. What do you do with all the great. time you saved from saying just cheese and onions? Or without cheese and onions, with that wit? Do you, do you use it wisely? I don't know. I, I don't. I, I, I'll be honest. <laughs> yeah, but like, with that Delco? Name, is you safe? I think I'm Delco is the best team. place. All right, let's... Technical issues. Technical issues. No, you're good. No. Kip, you go. <laughs> Wait, we're gonna ask. Uh, what's the difference you've noticed so far? How's how's it been going to Philadelphia as a visitor to now playing for them as a home team? Is the crowd a little bit nicer to you? Yeah, it's a lot more friendly. It's as, a lot more a friendly now. That's as good. A visiting team. Yeah, so <laughs> it's been great. Uh, really looking forward to the weather turning and and not playing and. Um, 40 mile an hour gusting, gusting winds and mist. Uh, but, you know, I guess it's just a, a preparation for late October. Well, there you go. preparation for that, for that wedding. 
Did, were the guys asking about the wedding on the off day? That was you, taking you guys place heard about that. <laughs> we, we heard about it, but I want. I mean, yeah, I, I got some context. The story I heard was they they had a, a big ass wedding plan there, so they're like, so whether it was true or not, they're like, I mean, six hour rain delays are not normal, but we got to play today because we ain't playing tomorrow. Hey, it was cool with us. We had we got a we had an off day yesterday. Uh, had golf lined up, and um, yeah, it was. We were all we were all for not losing the off day. So whether they took that as there's well, there's a wedding on the off day, so we got to play on on Wednesday, and uh, whatever they had to do to to get us to play on Wednesday, we were we were okay with it. Where would you play golf? Burning tree yesterday it was awesome. Oh, you're just you're living the rough life. I thought you were gonna say Marion, you know, Burning Philly Cricket Club, you know. Oh, sorry, Burning Tree. Yeah, we got we got the Philly spots lined up, but you know we had the off day here, so didn't wanna didn't wanna just stick around and not, I missed the train ride. We took a train over here, which was the first time I've done that in the big leagues, which was awesome. I loved it. How good is the how good is a train ride? I loved it. Yeah, it was it was awesome. You just hop on and go, and then you're there. It's, it was it was great. Did they have the uh, drink car and everything, like a food car, or drink car, and you just kind of and everyone kind of mingles in the different cars? Food car, drink car. Uh, we had a we had our own little like like card room in the back. It was it was wow. great. I, I loved it. <laughs> it's big league, big league train ride. It was big league. It was show. Yeah. How do you ha do you have your Pine Valley connection yet? Oh yeah, no, I got I got a. Two rounds set up there. I'm uh, going to try to go play Marion. Um, we have an off day next homestand, and uh, I think I'll probably get to go play Marion that day. Uh, every time I talk to somebody about golf in Philly. Oh. They keep calling him. That's my wife. He's coming calling back. Me again. She needs Maybe to hang you should out. answer that. Maybe, yeah. You sure? Uh, Maybe you should answer that. <laughs> Maybe it's the frogs. Yeah, she'll be fine. Be I told her to call me. She had a she had a lactation meeting because uh, you know we got a we have one month old now, and she, I told her to call me afterwards, and she's listening. Now she's texting me. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll we'll keep it snappy then, so you don't get in yeah, trouble. No, wait, hold up. We're talking golf, dude. Calm down, Scott. You don't even play golf. <laughs> you don't even so know what I was asking. You you're not asking about golf. Obviously, I'm not. Exactly. <laughs> By the way, if you, if you do go to Pine Valley, with you can't wear your shacket. They will not let you in with your shacket. Correct. Correct. I mean, you yeah. have to. Yeah. I, I did mean, get as to, soon as you. I did get to play get last out. year, so I got some Pine Valley gear I'll, I'll wear when I go. I mean, as soon as you get out of the shower, they're literally like, "Put your jack, your sport coat on, sir." Like, I mean, you don't even get to dry yeah. off, and they want your sport coat. And do not talk about what you shot. I'm just saying, nobody cares. Nobody cares. Nobody cares except for the guys that I'm playing against because they like to know what I shoot so that they can ask for more strokes next time. Who's 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 the golfers? But nobody else cares. Who's the golfers? Um, JT's really good. Uh, uh, Schwab, Schwab is Schwab is pretty good. He likes to play a lot. Uh, Garrett Stubbs, Trey, uh, Stott, uh, Hoffman. Um, uh, we're trying to get Marsh out there a little bit, but he's he's a little new to it. Um, and Taiwan, Taiwan's pretty good, but he's banged up right now, so he's not playing. A lot of golfers in this team. I like it. I like it. When you when you play the Mets, is McNeil going to walk out with his trophy to hit his first at bat? Is he going to carry it to second base? Uh, maybe. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know if. Uh... With, with the with the re situation, I don't know. I mean, Neil will be thrilled to go play golf with the Phillies. So, <laughs> what do you think of that play? Whose side are you on? Um, it's a I mean, it's a clean slide. Uh, so I, I thought I think it, I think it was a clean slide. You know, he, he was breaking up a double play. Um, well, you got to say, uh, yeah. I mean, as a second baseman, it sucks when someone slides into you, but at the same time, it's you know. They didn't. They didn't turn a double play, so the job was done. Did you like this from the dugout? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. That's. I don't know. I mean, I think there's some history there from from what I what I've been told. Um, 
in, in the clubhouse here that there's a little bit of history between the Mets and Reese. And, uh, yeah, I mean, people – People have different people have, have different reactions to different situations, and um, it seemed that seemed to be the one that the cameras caught and that people hung on to. Yeah, you're things. in Reese territory, though. You know, you're in a good spot. What's that? Really, they love they love Reese in Philly. Hmm. Oh yeah, no doubt. Yeah, Reese. Yeah. They love Reese in Philly. The fans, the clubhouse. Um, I got to know Reese a little bit playing. In the Japan All Star thing in 2018, we were on the same team, so I got to know him a little bit then, and he's a great guy. If you know somebody, like one of the things that it caught McNeil saying was, "Oh, we know this guy's a dirty player. He, we have so much video of it, so it's clearly a history." Like you said, if you know somebody's a dirty player, are you a little more worried trying to turn, or you not know a dirty player? You think like you. Like, he feels like he's a dirty player. Are you more worried about turning two at second base, or you feel like the rules have, have completely eliminated that? Yeah, I mean, there, there's guys uh, I, that I play against that I know are going to come into second hard. And um, I don't – yeah, it makes you think. And, and frankly, it's I, – I, I like it. Um, I think it's – as long as you're not coming in high, like cleats high coming in uh, – putting your cleat on somebody's knee or something like that. If you're going in low, just trying to trying to disrupt the play, I, I don't feel like there's an issue with it. Um, but, I, you know, from the time I was little, I've been – I was taught to practice turning and jumping and, and doing all these things a second to avoid, avoid that. And I think it's part of the game. So, yeah, you're aware of guys that, that go in hard and, you know, hopefully – there's never that situation where it's egregious to where your guy's trying to hurt somebody. Um, but I, in my opinion, watching the play, I, I didn't think it was a dirty play. I thought it was a hard play that uh, broke up a double play. And, I mean, by the letter of the rule, it was a clean slide. We used to have meetings, and we used to have, like, the hitters meetings, the pitchers meetings, or def- we'd have defensive meetings sometimes too. We'd say, like, okay, this guy's going to come and get you as a catcher. This guy will run over the catcher. So be aware, be ready for it. Do you guys still talk about that, or is because of the new rules, it's just kind of gone away, and you just have to figure it out on your own? Yeah, we don't talk about it as much anymore. Uh, when it comes to that, we talk about how guys slide into second. Uh, if guys, if um, if guys are feet first or, or head first sliders, if guys have a tendency to slide uh, kind of late and, and um, pop off the bag, stuff like that, just to make sure that you're. You're keeping that, keeping your tag on on certain guys. Um, so we talk about that, but yeah, the we don't talk so much about guys break like you know breaking out double plays. We used to talk about guys blocking, uh, blocking the base when you're sliding into the base, like blocking second or blocking third if you're trying to steal. But that's gone now, so we don't talk about that so much anymore. Um, you know when there's a, a hard, aggressive slider on, on first base. You know when that type of player is there. You know um, middle infielder is very aware of who gets on to first base when they're at second base. I think one of my favorite, I just piled it out, it was next to me. One of my cards, Don Kelly absolutely lighting me up. Hold on, let me get to the camera. But like, <laughs> that was the, I, I used to love it that, uh, like, I, I love the, the play. As long as it's never crossing the dirty bo- like boundary where you think some guy's actually trying to, to hurt you. But there's other guys back in the day, the Eric Ibars and these uh, other guys, that they come in pretty hot and they know how to, even around the bag, they know how to maybe drop that knee and get away from stuff. So I think the middle infielders are very aware of the type of player what, who's on first base coming at them. Because, um, listen, there's times, and I wit maybe might not have this. I sure did, though. There's times... That throw might come from a little bit lower slot, or some you 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 meet them kind of head on or something. I don't think you let them get away with anything anymore. I think it's just something that you plan you plan for when you you know they get to first base. No doubt, yeah. There's and there's ways uh, that I was taught early on to to protect yourself. Whether it's um, you throw and get off the ground, and you know if the guy kind of comes at you, you just happen to land on him. And uh, how you land yep, on him yep. is, you know, could be indifferent if, if you don't like what he did. Land on him with an elbow or a knee or whatever it is. But, you know, there's ways to protect yourself and ways to let, you know, guys know that you don't want them to 
uh, there's ways to make guys double, uh, think twice about coming in and how they come in a second, whether you drop down and, and throw it from a lower angle and, you know, if they're a late slide and it kind of goes right by their head or something like that. So there's different ways that you can protect yourself as a middle infielder. If they're standing not, tall, if they're standing tall, sorry, you throw it right through them almost, right through their their. It's like not you're not aiming to hit them in the face, but that's like they, they get down and you're like, yeah, they're in the way. You're in the way, and you're like, you better start getting down then, otherwise hit next me. one's connected. Hit me, please, because yeah. then it ain't a double play. So hit me. I didn't care. Hit me. I was about to say, I, I put listen, my I hands up. I, I put AJ. my hands up like this guy for sure. Oh, dude, I was trying for to get sure. my hands hit by the ball. I was, but I would always go in and cover my face, right? Yeah, so you like, better keep covering it. Oh, but, uh, right, you don't play. You retire. If I could like reach you, that, dude? if I could reach that high, I would get you right between those eyes. <laughs> Trust me, dude. I was listen. I didn't want the guy to turn. I was trying to. I was like sticking my hands up, trying to like. Did you do? You I would slide up? like this, so I yeah. yeah. And then when I get close, you cover your face because, like, they were talking about back in the day. Did I mean, you- it was it was expected. Like you were gonna get. You were coming to uh, get him, and the dude was dropping knees, and you were like, just don't get me in the face, dude. AJ would yeah. run like Woody from Toy Story. <laughs> at, <laughs> at the basement when he's trying to break it up. Hey, if you didn't turn the double play, you didn't turn the double play. That's an extra out we get. Wit knows. Wit's tough. Wit's tough. He's not just a good-looking face. He knows, he knows what he needs to do, okay? Wit. I got to ask, and I'm not going to lead you, okay? So I'm just going to ask, what do you think of the City Connects? I kind of like them. I, I do. I, I do kind of like them. Uh, I don't know how – how's the how's the people feeling about it? Are we on it? Are we off it? But I, I kind of like them. I think they're kind of cool. The people? The people? I'm the only one. They, you and I, we're neighbors. That, we're that, neighbors. Now, they, they, problem with it. I saw they that, just came out, and I didn't – the number looks a little weird, but I haven't seen the number yet. But uh, mark? I just saw that. Yeah, that's a lot. Um, <laughs> that's but I saw they got. I, I saw they got. You know, announced today, and I didn't know if there was a consensus feeling among uh, social media world on how it felt. I hadn't looked at it, but I think they're kind of cool. I like them. I, I, like I just the colors. I just can't believe that they didn't use uh, Wit Zoolander as one of the models. I mean, they used Harper and JT and Schwarbs and all these guys, but Wit Zoolander didn't make. You guys are all over my jacket. I like it. This is. This is I love really it. Cool. No, we're giving. No, we're complimenting. They're, they're, no, no, they can't afford no, you, no, no. Wit. They can't afford you. No, they're not giving you shit. No, we're it's being actual, serious. It actually is serious. Like it's like your hair. Everything is on just on point today. Your yeah. hair, your outfit is on point. Sometimes no wonder your wife in. is calling you. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Get home. <laughs> He's like, you look great. You look great. You guys are making uh-huh. me uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> All right, la- last one then. This will this will be better. Uh, next year, you are going to be back in the minor leagues, playing in Sacramento. Your thoughts? Uh, p- please, please elaborate. <laughs> the A's. You know I would. You, would, you know I wouldn't knock you. I'm saying you're going to be playing in Sacramento because the Oakland A's are going to be playing there for years, years. And we just spent 30 minutes talking about how players react to the way that the sport is treating a situation like this. The A's are officially moving from Oakland to Vegas eventually, but it could be like four or five years. So they're going to spend all that time in that little minor league spot in Sacramento. Are they really? Yeah. I didn't. I didn't know about this. This is uh, so that where the the Triple A Sacramento team. That's going to be where the A's play. Correct. All right. <laughs> <laughs> this is not like a couple of for a month. You played there, right? Two. You played in Sacramento with with Omaha, right? They they went there in the yeah. PCL. Did they had the yeah. gold building? They had the gold building in right field where the sun would hit and you couldn't see anything off of it. They still have that. Uh, I, I remember that in Iowa. I didn't remember that in Sacramento, but I only played there, I think twice, maybe once, but, uh, I remember where we stayed. I, I, I remember actually kind of liking Sacramento. I didn't definitely didn't think it was a, a big league city or ballpark, but, uh, yeah, that's, uh, I didn't, yeah, that's interesting. I didn't know that, that this was going to be a thing, but all right. <laughs> At least you won't be on that team, but you will have to play there. I mean, you know, they did this with the Jays, like you were on the Jays. They did this with Buffalo during COVID and all that. But 
this is different. This is years and years of playing out there. Yeah, this sounds like something that uh, wasn't by by government mandate. So that's uh, interesting. Yeah, interesting. That'll All be right, weird. so I gotta before you go, we're we're back to more, you know, back to baseball. How's your dad and Wake Forest doing? They're preseason number one. They've kind of bumping in the road a little bit. I mean, what's going on down there in, uh, you know, Winston Salem with the Deeks? Yeah, they haven't got off to the best start. Uh, it's hard, man. It's hard to. They had so much, I think, hype and expectation going into the season. Um, young kids, that can be really difficult to live up to. But they're getting healthy. They're getting some bullpen arms back, which will help. Um, I think some of their weekend guys are starting to settle in. The Chase Burns dude has been fun to watch, and uh, Kurtz is starting to get hot. So, um, you know, I mean, it's with baseball. Most like any like any other sport, it's all about getting hot at the right time. So, you know, they're going through their bump, their their tough patch now, and they can maybe they can right the ship and, and start peaking around the postseason. My favorite player name of all time is gone, right? Tommy Hawk, little leadoff guy. I think he yeah, but his he, brother's he, there. Oh yeah, they had a little leadoff guy. His name was Tommy Hawk. He was like a little lefty, and it was yeah. just the greatest name. Yeah, ever. that is a great. Oh, so it's such an awesome Tommy for like a little. For a little leadoff lefty guy, and you know, he'd come up there and he'd, no, he's gonna Tommy Hawk it. I like that. Well, he yeah, was he drafted, was... I don't remember by who, but he was drafted by somebody. Yeah, he could run, he was a stud. All right, wait, great talking to you, dude. Call, call back, wifey, tell her sorry for the yeah. 15 minutes. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm blame you guys. Please blame us, <laughs> we will take the hit. Thanks, dude. Have fun, we'll catch Thanks, you soon. Guys. Thanks, Whit. All right, appreciate it. Appreciate you, Whit Merrifield with us on FT. That was fun. I mean, we were complimenting the guy, and he thought Scott was getting awkward with him. I don't understand. Me. Yeah, me. I'm, like, trying to no, grab we were, a baseball we were pressure, not, and you guys are like, we're talking about his, his hairstyle, his golf game, his uh, food. Leave us alone. You think he hasn't answered enough questions about his baseball game? He's like, answered what, many. Kip, would you, if as a player, were you like, if someone came up and asked you about your golf game, you're, like, way more excited Absolutely. in the middle of the year to talk, talk about, about that. It. Dude, I'm like, I've talked baseball 24-7 for – Eight months. Like, let's talk about something else. Well, we do both. Yeah, but you get mad. I don't care. And Wiz, and Wiz Wit, and Wiz Wit is only Wit if you have Wiz. Okay, so it's Wiz Wit. That means it's Wiz and onions, or Wiz without <laughs> is Wiz with onions. You can't have provolone God. wit. You, you don't say provolone wit. Provolone, provolone. Jason <laughs> Jason Kipnis is, is taking uh, notes. Go to the Knicks. Go to the Knicks and get the four. Yeah, for his next restaurant, Kip, Kip will work on that. All right, before we get to Ken, can uh, we do one in the weeds topic? Oh, we were just way in the weeds. Well, we yeah. We, yeah. <laughs> oh, never mind. Ding, we'll ding, 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 Ken Do we have it? Can you play it? I guess that's enough. Ooh. No, that's the bad one. Oh, there's another one? No. <laughs> This is it. So if we're Hello. talking too much, Ken, there you like this? this is new. If we're talking too much and our guest has been waiting and we didn't check our little messenger that the guest is ready, they're just going to play a doorbell to shut us up. <laughs> I, <like that. laughs> I think it's great. Ken, Ken, shouldn't you be at a game right now? Why? I should be, AJ, but I'm here with you, aren't I? Well, uh, no, but I'm just wondering because, like, are you at the are you at the hotel like across the street from a certain stadium? You can just open your window and it like opens into the like, left field. I am not, but I was just at that stadium, which was Wrigley Field, and I returned to my hotel room, and now I'm going to do some work while I watch the game. There mm -hmm. you go. All right, so I recognize that hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say the room number. I'm not going to say where he's at. Don't say it. All right, uh, Ken. Let's start with your freshest article. The Diamondbacks versus the Rangers for the Jordan Montgomery sweepstakes. Uh, can you give us a little sneak peek of what you put together in the athletic? Sure. Basically, I called the Diamondbacks owner, Ken Kendrick, and I said, okay, you had already spent a good amount of money this offseason. How are you able to spend more on Montgomery late when so many teams, including the Rangers, your World Series opponent, were not willing to do that? And he took me through it, and it was kind of interesting. He said, basically, the revenues they received from the World Series last year, which were completely unexpected, their run of 17 playoff games, that got them a certain amount of money that was essentially found money. 
Then they had season ticket sales that increased from 10,000 to 30,000 up to 13,000, so about an increase of 30%, 10,000 to 13,000. And then single game sales were also up, and they knew this because they went on sale those single game tickets around February 1st through February and March. That momentum was building and they knew they had a little extra money to play with. So you put that all together. My estimate on their World Series revenue is about $30 million. Then you get the increase in season tickets at higher ticket prices, individual, season, individual game sales at higher ticket prices because they raised them slightly, and they felt comfortable. Now, the question then is, okay, why didn't the Rangers do this? This is a team that spent more money than the Diamondbacks, generally speaking, year after year. And it came down to a combination of their owner, Ray Davis, telling the Dallas Morning News that, they were worried about the future of their regional sports network and what was going to happen without that network and once they get into the streaming era. The same problem that the Diamondbacks face, by the way. And they were also worried, and this was more pertinent perhaps, about the luxury tax. They were past the second threshold. If they had gone past the third, then it would have cost them a draft pick or at least moved their draft pick back 10 slots, first rounder. And those were concerns that they had. They had already spent a ton of money the last two years, so they just felt it wasn't appropriate for them, or their owner felt that anyway. I just thought it was interesting kind of comparing the two and hearing why the Diamondbacks felt comfortable in signing Jordan Montgomery to a one-year $25 million deal that could grow to two years 25 or two years 50 if he exercises a player option that would have to vest. How refreshing is it, though, Ken, to hear an owner be like, oh, I made $30 million? I'm going to reinvest it back in to my team instead of going, oh, I'm just going to pocket this and save it for my grandchildren You know, when I, once I'm gone. like This is refreshing to hear a team owner actually say this out loud, like, hey, we made money, the fans showed up, now we're going to put it back into the team for you fans. Right, and Ken Kendrick's position is that they are a zero cash flow operation. Whatever money comes in, they put it back into the team. I will say there is no way to verify that that he's not actually making money off the team. They don't open their books, these teams, because they're private enterprises. But that is generally the way he says he is operating. And certainly in this case, he did because they had extra money. And yes, he definitely spent more money this offseason. Their record payroll, their payroll is a record by, I don't know, some 30 million or something. So yes, they definitely have done it in a way that most fans would say is satisfying. So is this because we we heard from their ownership, hey, we want to move, we want to move our stadium. You know, we need new stadium, whatever location, or we need renovations that we're not willing to spend on. What is because we saw this kind of a influx of money in Kansas City, they want to move. Does it have anything to do with that? When you talk to him about new new stadium relocation, does it have anything to is that connected? First of all, they're not talking about a relocation. They're talking about renovations. And Eric, it's a good question. I didn't include it in the article because I didn't think it was relevant to this particular issue. But what Kendrick told me was that they have asked their county, Maricopa County in Arizona, to give them money for re renovations. At the same time, they are willing to put in a certain amount of money as well. I believe he said the renovations would be something like 400 to 500 million, and the team is willing to put in something along the lines of 250 to 300. I don't know those numbers exactly off the top of my head, something in that range. So I don't know if that really is influencing them at all with regard to how they're running their team this season. But yes, Chase Field is, I believe, the third oldest of the newer ballparks, and they want to do some things to it to update it. It's been around since 1998. How that all transpires, whether indeed they talk about moving at some point, I don't know. But he stressed to me that he is an Arizonan. He moved there a long time ago, and he has no intention of moving the team. And I said, well, some people perceive what you're saying as a threat. And he said, it's not a threat. I'm just saying we need these renovations, and I'm willing to put in hundreds of millions to do that. And if there's really a problem, Ken can always just move to a minor league park for a little bit. You know, that's cool now. So <laughs> we spoke about it. I'm, hey, if we're going to be a joke as a sport with this situation, 
might as well have fun with it because clearly a lot of people that are in charge don't care about it. So you covered this in fair territory when the news broke. We've talked about it since, but a lot has happened even since from the information side of things. I know you've written about it, Evan Drelick too. So what have you learned since the news broke about Sacramento? Certainly it's going to be really impactful, not just to the fans in Oakland, but to the employees of the Oakland A's who are not able to shift to Sacramento. And Evan Drellick wrote about this today, I believe. And Dave Cavill, team president, admitted there are going to be people who lose their jobs. So there's not just the cost in the emotional value of the team to the community, but there is an actual human cost in jobs. As for the whole situation, Scott, I did say my piece on fair territory, but I'll say it again. It is an embarrassment to baseball that they're in this position. I'm sorry. You can't go to a 14,000 seat stadium for three years and tell me this is a good thing. And for that matter, you can't even tell me for certain that this move to Las Vegas, one, is going to happen, and two, is a good thing. We're not quite so sure about that. So from a global perspective, the way this has been handled by the league and by the team, in my view, is very distasteful. And it is wrong. It should not have happened this way. And it'll be interesting to see whether they entertain Oakland as an expansion possibility down the line here once we get to that. Because Oakland continues to insist that they want a team. They continue to insist, I'm talking about the city people, the city officials, that they can line up new owners. They continue to insist that they have a stadium plan. MLB has dismissed all this and not taken it seriously. And perhaps they're right. Perhaps the plans aren't as solid as the Oakland people would make you believe that they are. But we're talking about one of the 10 largest markets, television markets, in the country. You're leaving that market for a much smaller market, for number 40. You're stopping at number 20, Sacramento, which is actually a bigger television market than Las Vegas. The owners seem good with it. The commissioner seems good with it. We'll see how it all transpires. <laughs> Ken, we were talking a little bit earlier uh, on the show before you got on. What what would covering a playoff series be like there in Sacramento? What would How would they do that? What would playing there be like? How could they manage to fit in all the fans that wanted to come or the – they can't – the minor league stadium is probably just not – not probably. It's just not built to hold that capacity for that big of a, an ordeal. Jason, I'm not so worried about the A's. I mean, I, I, that's what it was said the same way. It was prefaced but, the same way before you're on. The greater point to me is it's not a major league quality facility for the players who are going to be playing there. Now, I know it's a nice minor league stadium. Great. They did a great job, whatever. But with major league ballparks, there are certain amenities that are expected. And you can make the case that the Oakland Coliseum is not a major league ballpark the way it should be. But. <laughs> This is the league and the team opting for this. And if I'm the MLBPA, I'm screaming my head off about this. Then they might be. I, we don't know. They're being very kind of quiet about this so far, other than to say that they've voiced their concerns. But what about the batting cages? What about the clubhouses? What about all of the things, all the accoutrements that players are accustomed to now? And frankly, at playing at the highest level, deserve where are those things going to be? How is that all going to play out? I'm not feeling great about it. And the follow-up here, Ken, is if you're not worried about playoff baseball in Sacramento and how embarrassing it looks that we have minor league ballparks hosting playoff baseball, then that means it would go against their promise of heading to Vegas with tons of momentum, higher payroll, great team. I joked earlier, oh, you're going to go to Vegas where it's so hard to attract. There are so many things to do. You're going to have a crappy team. It's either that or we're going to see playoff ball in Sacramento, right? The last year before they leave, they're either good or they're not. So you're either going to have momentum for tickets or you're not. There's not going to be much in between. So curious for your thoughts on that. And John Fisher only knowing about Aaron Judge and excited to see him bash homers against his own pitchers. <laughs> well, that comment was roundly received in a negative fashion, and it should have been. It was ridiculous. Now, they have – discussed internally, and I've reported this, plans to ramp up the payroll to the 130 to $150 million range in this period in Sacramento and then get to Las Vegas at about 170 I've said this, I've written it, and I will say it again. I'll believe it when I see it. 
And the A's talk a lot about what they're going to do. They've talked a lot for years about what they're going to do. And we'll see if it all works out the way they claim it's going to work out. I'm suspicious, needless to say. And we don't know how their TV deal, which paid them approximately $70 million a year when they're in the Bay Area, and now it will be adjusted and downward because they're in Sacramento. We don't know what effect that will have on their plans. So, again, I'll believe it when I see it, and I want to see it. And honestly, guys, the commissioner has spoken very positively about this move, basically presented Oakland as not an option for the A's. Okay, but... This is going to be on him, too, because this is Major League Baseball and approving this move and approving all of that, which it entails. And again, we'll see how it works out. We'll see. Ken, since they're in a minor league stadium, how are they going to, I love the air quotes, sign Major League players to go there? There's not going to be a big league free agent that's a big star and is like, yeah, I'm going to go play in Sacramento in a 10,000-seat stadium, right? So they're going to either have to – a, overpay, which the A's don't do, or they're going to be the same old A's and have a $40, 50000000 million payroll, right? There's no way. If you're a big time, if you're, I don't know, I'm trying, if you're Corbin Burns and the A's come to you and say, hey, here's 10 years, 300, and you're like, and you have another one from another team, you're like, man, I got to go play in a minor league stadium for four years possibly? Won't they have to overpay a lot to get anybody to go there? Two things on this, AJ. There are many ways to increase payroll. Actually, there's one other way to increase payroll besides signing free agents. And that, actually, two other ways. You can sign extensions with your own players, right? And I guess more applicable here, you can trade for expensive players and go about it that way. That is a possibility. But when it comes to major league free agents, you're absolutely right. If there is a better option, you're going to take that better option at a similar offer. Now, the question is, if they do overpay and if they do decide, okay, we'll give you player X five years at $15 million per year, five years, 75, when he really in the market probably only is going to go three times 10, three years, 30 million. That's a way a player would get there, right? If you're getting $45 million more or even $10 million more, you might take that deal because maybe you're extending that contract into the period in Las Vegas when they're going to open their ballpark and theoretically there will be excitement. So players understandably at times go for the money and if the A's offer that money, sure, they'll get players. But again, it's not going to be anyone's first choice, I would imagine. Ken, give us a sneak peek into what you're working on for tomorrow with the game with, I mean, the Dodgers, Cubs. Is there a more marquee game this weekend? I don't know. I haven't looked at the rest of the schedule, but we've got Yamamoto tomorrow. So I'm really excited to see him pitch in person. I saw him once in spring, but this is the regular season now. And that was one of the things, obviously, I was focusing on today. But AJ knows this. When I go in on a Friday, I try to talk to as many people as possible and collect as many notes as possible for use on the broadcast if guys like AJ will let me talk. And that does <laughs> Oh, that is such bull crap. I can't even begin to explain it. Um, we don't have enough time to explain how much bull crap that completely is. But what I, there's two things I want to know. One. What's the bull crap? That I, that I get to talk as much as I want? No, that I don't let you talk. That's <laughs> that bull is crap. bull crap. Yeah, I Thank was thinking you. that. Up. Appreciate that. Okay, now, the two things I want to talk to you about besides that is how did you get to go on the road? Because I don't think the other broadcasters are there. So how do you – what kind of pull do you have on – Fox certain people to get to actually go. AJ, I do what I'm told, man. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> a good soldier. I like I it. have certain I'm texting certain people as we speak, and I'm like, go hey, ahead, I'm text them. Well, he's I, the it's reporter, not like I'm though. sitting there yeah, but, pressuring the people from Fox. Uh, you need to send me on the road. <laughs> oh, see, I think exactly <laughs> what you're doing. That face for sure. Exactly. Yeah, that threatens anybody. And then where's dinner tonight? Probably in my room, AJ. Oh, because yeah. I know a guy, he's right below me, that can get you into Gibson's reservation for one. Yeah, okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm good. I'm good. I, okay. I got one more for Ken. We were going to cover this. Maybe we'll cover this right after you give your answer, and then we'll let you jump. So some fans have been asking us about Anthony Rendon and Giancarlo Stanton. Both of them have had slow starts. It's more of a prediction question here to start is, do you think if they struggle immensely – 
it could get to a point where the team tries to approach one of these players to see what they can do about it. In Giancarlo's case, some Yankee fans have asked us about when Jason Dominguez comes back. In Anthony Rendon's case, he's 0 for 19, all the stuff that he said. It's just been bad vibes. I know he's got a lot of time left. Just curious if you think this could be a year where one of those players ends up getting bought out or DFA'd. I can't rule it out, but while I don't have the contracts in front of me, there is a lot of money left on both. And teams generally don't like to eat contracts. I will say this. To me, they're different situations entirely. Stanton is a guy who has at least verbalized how much he cares, like how much he wants to get better, and how much he is fed up with what has happened the last couple of years. He took great pains this offseason to get himself in a different kind of physical condition. He was always in great shape, but he's leaner. He wants to stay healthier, and it's a bad start. Let's see if it continues before really passing judgment. Rendon, you can say the same thing. A bad start is a bad start. We're talking about a week's worth of games. He has not expressed the same passion that Stanton has, to put it mildly. But at the same time, it's tough to release guys with that much money left, especially when you don't have a better alternative. Now, the Yankees, once Dominguez is ready, feel like their best team is with Dominguez and they've got to pay Stanton anyway. You might as well just eat the money, I guess. But Boone has been pretty adamant even of late saying when Giancarlo Stanton is right he is a force and we know that he is so it's really difficult for me to imagine them taking that step Rendon I don't see it either and I want to give him more time as well I just can't rule out a guy or start talking like this after a week's worth of games but both situations definitely something to watch yep Rendon has the shorter contract length left his is through 2026. So you got three years, including this one, left on that deal. Dude, but- some of the some of the tweets, some of the the memes, whatever you want to call it, about Rendo and like the one with like Noah Shanwell was in that college. We just showed. Yeah. Last, but there's like it keeps popping up on my Twitter feed. No, or uh, not no, 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 sorry, Anthony Rendon spray chart. And it's the field, and there's no dots on it because he hasn't gotten a hit. <laughs> yeah. It's like so that bad. It's yeah. so it's so messed up because we've all been there, but it's just like it's just the it's the guy that you wanted to see get off to a at least an okay start. Yeah, right? because of what happened. Yeah, I mean, and also, guys, they need him. Yes, the team is built around. He's lead off. Trout being healthy and good, and when they're not healthy and good, it's a problem. Now they played a little bit better since that team meeting. I'll give them a lot of credit. I thought that was crazy to have a team meeting after two games. What Wash called it and. <laughs> Again, give them credit because they have played better, granted, against the Marlins. But they need Rendon to be good to be the kind of team that they want to be. Oh, that was funny. He had, right. Hey, you got to say it. The Marlins are 0-8. So I know, but it's Marlins. just funny how he's like, they played better against the Marlins. Well, Bad hey, competition, quality of competition matters, guys, especially this time. Not according year. to Scott. Not, a, not is, according to that Scott. Is, that is troll comments. I'm the one last year that's like, I love the Rays start, but they're not the best team ever. Right. And look what happened. That was a good example the other way. Yeah. Yeah. No, let's, good, uh, let, let's ask this question. Will Mike okay, Trout hit a home run with somebody on base this year? That's the question. <laughs> I'll take I the believe over. he will. He's <laughs> off to a good start, AJ. He's off to a good I know, but he's got three oh, homers, three RBIs. <laughs> Not yeah. exactly his fault. No, no. RBIs don't matter, Ken. RBIs, yeah, don't, matter. Yeah. RBIs yeah. don't matter. RBIs do matter. They do. Yeah, Ken's on our side. AJ's yeah. on one right now. Uh, as you, as I'm just old. mad he's in Chicago <laughs> and I didn't get invited. That's what I'm mad oh, about. Well, nice 45 degrees for first pitch, I think, tomorrow. Ken, stay warm. We'll watch you on the game tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks, Ken. <laughs> Ken Rosenthal. Star of Fair Territory back on Monday. And the live show is every Thursday at 1230 Eastern Time. Hosted by Ken and new co-host Alana Rizzo. Grill and Ken answers your fan questions. He usually puts out a tweet asking for your fan questions. And then also during the show, we take some YouTube chat comments. All right, let's do this. Bet MGM time. Going over picks and first, the free game of the day. Lineup, Phillies Nationals, White Sox Royals on Saturday, and Dodgers Cubs on Sunday. 
can get those games within the app. Use, that streaming is available to BetMGM customers who are logged in and have funded accounts in each game um, is there for you to be able to watch Phillies, Nats, White Sox, Royals, Dodgers, Cubs. And I'm actually picking one of those games. So I'll watch oh, it yeah? in the app. Yeah, we had an awful day yesterday. Let's Oof. move on. We had offers. I do. I feel sorry for everyone except for Pavel Bond because he was calling me out in his little video thing. So he gets what he gets. <laughs> yes. I don't remember I got him calling you out. I don't he goes, I'm gonna. He goes, sorry about you know, but your White Sox suck, and they're gonna get and they're gonna get killed tonight by the Royals. Wow. I didn't even know you're still get offended by that. Well, I don't, but I you know makes for good banter. You made it. <laughs> <laughs> the, the problem is he didn't put his money where his mouth was. He said the White Sox suck. Okay, Pat, so you picked KC, but why didn't you pick the over? The White know. Sox suck. They might let up double-digit runs. <laughs> they might they let did. a ground ball to short score three. Yeah. Ugh. All right, so here's locks. I'll lead off just because it's one of it's the game of the day in the app. I've got the Philadelphia Phillies run line over the Washington Nationals at minus one and a half. Uh, laying down 110 to win a hundo. Aaron Nola coming off a bad first start against the Braves. Got a better lineup for you, Aaron. It's the Washington Nationals. It's got good numbers against them. Got the dub there. Philly's bullpen is fully rested, coming off the off day. And they have good numbers against left-handed pitcher Patrick Corbin. Phillies have been going through with the bad weather. Now they look all swaggy, heading to a, I think, better weather day for this game. So I've got them winning by two or more. Eric Kratz, Philly specialist, your thoughts and your pick. I like it. I like what you're doing. Patrick Corbin started off slow. I like everything about it. That's why I'm tailing it as part of my team parlay, my FT team parlay, which didn't hit yesterday, but that's okay. All our picks together, I'll give you the odds at the end. But I'm going the under in Colorado. Does anybody know what the over-under in Colorado is before I tell you? 13. Yes, you're exactly right. I'm going no, under 13. We asked. I looked because I have thought about that. I looked. <laughs> under no. 13. Zach Littell going against Gomber. And historically, the under hits in Colorado, they try to get you to get you to go over because you think they're going to score a lot of runs. So based on how this year is going for me, they're going to score 10 in the first. So – that's coming off at minus 110. I am putting 110 down to win 100. Very nice. All right. We'll save our special birthday boy for last. So okay. What do you have? I am going same game parlay strikeout prop. Dylan Cease over six and a half. He only he punched out, I think, six, six giants on last Saturday when I did the game. He didn't have his best stuff. He only four and two thirds. He only punched out six. I feel like that's he's got an eight or nine spot in him this time. And then I'm taking Jordan Hicks over four and a half. And he went five innings last time in his first ever first start for the Giants. He punched out six in five innings. So I think that, you know, again, that seems like a pretty easy number. Those are low numbers, especially for Cease. Cease didn't have his best stuff, fell behind a lot. I think it's going to be different for him this time. His second start with a new team instead of his first start, not at home, on the road. I just think it's an opportunity pretty easy for both of them to, to get over that number easy. Tell him that. I like that one. Kip? I'm going to Cincy. I'm going to go Cincinnati minus one and a half versus the Mets. Uh, they just took two of three from Philly. I uh, got a day off to come home, get situated. Um, got a hard throw in green. Their bullpens should be rested. And uh, I think just I'm, I'm, the Mets are going to turn it around. I just don't think it'll be tonight. Their lineup still is struggling. So we're going to, we're going to keep going against that right now. Yeah, I was considering that one too. That lineup struggling and still worried about the pitching for the Mets too. There your locks. Also, by the way, look at that number plus three three three. That's such a cool like. What are the sh- what are the chances? You found <laughs> the holy yeah. grail. I'm just gonna start looking for cool numbers to throw on the screen. <laughs> like that won't work. Machine. Just keep adding to it. Yeah, till I get a good number and they're like, "That's my bet." <laughs> <laughs> you might not like the results. If you're doing <laughs> yeah. it, what do you mean, dude? That's that's dude. I'm gonna be in a no, positive. No, for this, I'm saying if you're picking on numbers every time oh, to true. find a pretty plus, <laughs> this one's two two two. 
Let me add a walk. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Grand Slam jackpot is on every Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So it is a weekly bet and get promotion. Place a $10 or more wager on any player to hit a home run every weekend. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's the weekend that we're counting. And if the player hits a Grand Slam on that day, they can win the $50,000 daily prize or a share of the prize with every other winning better. So for example... And we're going to start playing this next week, okay? So starting next week, you pick a player that you think is going to dinger. So, for example, if you have Aaron Judge to hit a home run and he hits a grand slam, nine other people picked that as well. Each of you will take home five Gs in addition to the bet that mm. you placed, right? You split the 50K. Okay, I have my pick for today. You have one today? Uh -huh. Oh, okay. Oh, Dansby uh, Swanson. Why do you got to do that to us? <laughs> I, have my pick. I have my pick. It comes in droves. Dansby Pist Swanson? Pistol Pete Alonzo. Mm. Went to Cincinnati. That's the home of – he's going to Cincinnati. That's the home of the, the poop homer against Hunter Green. Hunter Green. I'm just saying. Hey, let's hope he times his chili right. If it's a slider, oh, he's taking yeah. a mile. Cause, right? Cause Wasn't that a slider? slider? He actually he had a slider that time, but later on he had a he had a heater out too. So he's got two against Hunter Green. Just saying, I want that fifty k. So I might put ten bucks down on on old old Peter Alonzo. I like it. It's getting locked in right now, along with the FT team bet, which is thirty coming off at plus thirty seven hunt thirty seven sixty three. So when we all hit our bets. We're winning plus three seven six three. Hey, last year, Good last number. year we went undefeated seventeen times. Just saying. No way. That many times? That's what I think Claudia said. Wow. Wow. All I'm right, I'm I'm placing tonight. Think how rich you could be, Scott. You wouldn't have to live here anymore. That would be it. <laughs> Take my pillow, my bed, my app, my towel. Get out of my son's loft. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be out of here. I'm placing tonight. My savings, 10 bucks on it tonight. Uh, all right. You want to do injury suck real quick? Someone got hurt? Always. Yeah. Every damn day. <laughs> if it's an outfielder for the White Sox, we don't want to talk about it. Oh, didn't that just happen, actually? That's mm -hmm. real, right? Oh, that's real. Well, we're going to add that. Oh. oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> we have our little fancy schmancy injury suck thing, so let's let's do it. Those feet, they'll get you. Jason Hayward's on the IL lower back tightness. That was from a day or two ago. We just want to throw it out there and talk about it. I think the Dodgers will be okay. Jonathan Loizaga is placed on the IL elbow issue. See, he's good. He's got good stuff. Mm -hmm. Yankees bullpen's really good. Mm -hmm. There was yeah. someone in the chat the other day that was like, for those of you that didn't think they have a top 10 bullpen, I was like, are you watching... I don't know, ESPN, MLB. Like, we definitely didn't say that. That was never a thing. Um, and then would you like to announce the next injury? Alec Thomas on the I.O. with a hamstring? That's one. White Sox lose anyone lately? Uh, that's White a White Sox, Sox connection. That's a White yeah, Sox. That's why I said, that's why I said it. Outfielder yeah. from the White Sox, yeah. Uh, Eloy. Aloy, I'm in as adductor. Where's your ad? Kip, show me where your adductor is, please, because I don't know where this one is. Ten years ago, they were around here, but I think it's more of a side, I want to say. I could be wrong. Kratzy, you got anything? I thought it's it was kind of like a, closer to your psoas. Kind of like, well, lower side. You know, those, yeah. you know at the gym, you know the, um, the ones where you – you know those ones? <laughs> no. No, 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 no. That's no, not – do you really not? That's, hey, look, I know what you're talking about. It's not that, for your app, You doctor. should never be on. You should never yeah. be on. You've never done ad. Why not? You've never done those? That is not for the male persona to be on that machine. That I do them. Female machine. Stop it. I, I swear I do them. Not <laughs> often, but I, I follow this super shredded dude on an app and – once every week or two, he's, he has you run onto those machines. It's good flexibility. He's trolling. 
he's trolling you. He's getting you to be videoed in your gym doing doing this. I have nothing to hide. Those, those the Jane Fondas. It's a machine both ways too. There's the we, one we got that push. part. We got that yep, part. We, we, in we, and out. <laughs> in and out. We're aware. Out. Okay. I'll send you guys a video later. If you're bored at home later. <laughs> I'm gonna jump on them today. Oh man. Just for you guys. I didn't, say, I didn't say anything. I didn't say a word. Okay, good. We she haven't gotten in trouble for 13 months. Slap ads. <laughs> Your adductors are gonna be shredded. <laughs> so the yankees home opener is today it's happening and we have been receiving messages from fans in the chat and on social media about a new addition to yankee stadium i'm can, can anyone else take this story to just lay, set the scene? Because I got another I, homer pick, Ernie Clement, two nothing. If if I explain this, homer? I'm gonna laugh. Can someone do this with a straight face? So the Yankees are selling their jerseys, the new jerseys from Fanatics, and they will charge you fifteen dollars to put the star insurance patch on it to make it, as Ken would do, authentic. <laughs> they will you have charge to pay. you fifteen bucks. 15. Right. For only fifteen dollars, you can get a star insurance patch. Like, like Kip, this is this is where the world has gotten. He used to be like, "Yo, if I put a tattoo on your back or something, how much, how much would it take for you to do that?" Now it's like, "Pay me, and I'll put my freaking insurance company on your shirt." I get the the marketing deals, and I get because you see it a lot more overseas and it's crept its way over to the U S and in baseball now. So it's not that surprising and you, you will see more of it, but like it should already be part of the Jersey. Why are the Yankees charging fans extra to make it an authentic Jersey? <laughs> I'm buying the Jersey at the place already. <laughs> Why? Shouldn't I mean, shouldn't you at least get it for free. You're putting advertising on yourself. Yeah. Free advertising. It's literally That's cost advertising. I, we need There's to find a bunch somebody. Of, There's been a bunch of head scratchers right now with the MLB. We need yeah. to find somebody that has the jersey that paid for the fifteen dollars, <laughs> and we need to get them a Mark. couple more followers on Twitter here at FT. Okay, where they probably Mark. paid for their blue check, where they probably paid for a bunch yep. of stuff. Need. They want that pub. We'll give them that pub. Yeah. I don't Do want that on my work? jersey. Obviously. I don't want that on my jersey. I don't like if I have an opportunity to have a jersey that doesn't have a patch that I played. Like my Team USA jersey, we have this energy drink from from Japan. I would love it if it was just a clean clean jersey that didn't have the energy drink that I have no idea what's in it and. <laughs> Like, but they but they sponsored the tournament, so everybody had to have the patch on their jersey. To me, it just looks cleaner. If I buy a Yankees jersey, I don't want that patch on. Even if it comes with it, I'll be like, hey, can you take that off, please? I'd pay extra for last year's jersey. Yeah, exactly. NBA? They are getting paid extra. If you if you hauled in and hoarded last year's jerseys, people have been selling them on, on like eBay and auction sites and getting a lot of money for them. For real. NBA does it. NBA does what? The patches, patches on there, but they're yeah. Like but right do here. they? So here's this. Well, I don't perfect, know if they charge perfect extra. Perfect example. I don't know the answer to that question. If I go to a Knicks game, that would require me buying an NBA jersey. Right. I don't know. But like, if I go to a Magic game, Knicks game, whatever, is there a stand set up for me to pay the team to put advertising on my merch? If it's automatically there, it's right, automatically you, you there. Bulls, the Bulls play at the Magic on Sunday. Why don't you go and let me know? On Sunday, nah. But I can text <laughs> Text all my Orlando friends. Um, Kratzats, what do you got? It's still cold. They're barely playing any games up there. They had almost all their – they had all the games in Rochester sold, uh, rained out so far, and Syracuse, I think, played part of one. Syracuse Sky Chiefs. It's freaking freezing up there. They should be down south playing like Charlotte and Norfolk and other places. You don't want to play Norfolk right now. Blows in. 
No, those wow. boys they score 25 runs a game yeah, with their team. Yeah, their yeah. team is Heston, Heston Kerstad hit his fifth homer in his 21st RBI already in six games. I he watched did have it last ten, night. He did have 10 BIs in one game, though. You know who that was against? Charlotte, Charlotte. Knights, baby. Kidding me? Charlotte Knights Didn't. apparently have like a run differential the last couple of years of like minus 350 or something. What do you mean? That's Dude, a great place to hit. the players perfectly to when they get to Chicago. Stop. <laughs> Stop trolling the white. <laughs> Mark, Mark Payton and Danny Mendick are, are anchoring that lineup. I know Mendick. FT on Monday, 1 o'clock Eastern time. Fair territory as well and Dodgers territory all coming out on Monday. Yep, good to see you, dude. Good to see you, gentlemen. Thank you. Love your shirt. FoulTerritoryShop.com. See you everyone Monday. Subscribe, please. Subscribe. subscribe. It's free. Just click the subscribe button. Mark Canna, Homer, but three nothing.